Uh, so we're gonna take just orgy wait until a again. reverse monster prom comes out and you get to romance the lamb. Yes. Uh, let's get sent. Well, actually, it's because my co-hosts were begging me to. Yeah, because it's not <laughs> going good. There's no resources. I don't know what I'm doing. I I just want to pick the one question right, and then I'm cool. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's take that MC Griffin EP. Let's take a coloring Hawaiian shirt. All right, let's see. What do I got here? Magic Mushrooms Guide, Lemonade Dabaki Makara, Pinata Pool Toy, Totally Fine Ukulele, <laughs> Uranium Lipstick, Canned Brain, Pocket Therapist, Flashback Light, Sock Puppet. What are the bold ones here, we think? The ukulele, maybe, right? Uh, yeah, the ukulele, probably the Uranium Lipstick, if I had to guess. Yeah, ukulele, okay. bold. I'll take the ukulele. Yeah, definitely sure. bold. And then probably uranium lipstick. Yep. Charm and All right. boldness. What else is bold here? I don't know. Wait, let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, do you have a guide? I found a guide for the items. Uh, yeah. Luminate is charm and fun. Uh, sock puppet is fun and creativity. Nope. Uh, therapist is three smarts. Nice. Only smarts. Bra a canned brain is two smarts and creativity. Mm. Oh, yeah, it's brain. Uh, I don't that know the sense. names of the other ones. Okay. Magic Yada Mushroom Pool Guide. Magic Mushroom's Guide is smarts and fun. Pool Toy. Pool Toy is fun and charm. And then Lemonade Docky Marker. Flashlight is boldness and creativity. Ah. Ooh, flashlight is bold. Ooh. Thank you, Boko. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, give me the penguin mask. Okay. Uh, give me the Pokemon. Okay. Okay. Oh, what else do I got here? Are you Let's picking see. all the fun ones or something? Uh, and give me the sleeping bag. Uh, that what? What's the name? Sleeping bag. No, that's the wrong one. There's two different sleeping bags. Uh, give yeah. me the sleeping bag anyway. Okay. Close to the last day of camp, there was a meteor shower happening just three weeks away. Everyone knew that if you were into someone, you were going to watch that damn thing together. And so, a silent yet powerful pressure invaded us. It was the monster prom all over again. Everything seemed uncertain. Everything but one thing. Whoever we were asking to the meteor shower date, it was probably going to be one of the six coolest people on that bus. Joy Johnson Jojiba, 23. A badass witch who wanted to chill a bit after saving the world countless times. Aravi Mish Mishra, 22, a hot-headed adventurer possessed by a curse who had turned out to be the most annoying roommate ever. Calculester Hewitt Packard, version 1.1, a library computer who had become a sentient robot ready to experience life to its fullest. Dahlia Akito, 20, a, bluff, a buff blue demon and warmonger who had set her sights on conquering summer next. Damien LeVay, 21, a fearless demon who had the taste for destruction and a love of fire. And Milo Belladonna, 23, a Death Reaper doubling as an internet influencer who was profoundly in love with life and all of its earthly pleasures. Bus trip was long, clear it came down to breaking the ice. Which of these articles would you most want to read? Very illegal things I do oh, no, in international different. waters. My deep complex Fuck. feelings about camembert. I mean, that one's, I already know that one. Why are you so easy? <laughs> They're all cheese. <laughs> Why are they all cheese? Uh, 50 facts about sequoias, how to headbutt a very big rock, secret tricks to win at rock, paper, scissors. I think, okay. Common mistakes uh, in forming a very first fertility Josh, ritual. I think you're... I, mine, oh, Josh. I guess it would be headbutt a rock. Yes. What Damien again? No, Damien loves doing illegal things. Oh, okay, thank God. Yeah, but Damien loves doing crimes. Dolly is like fucking pure strength, I guess. Pure yeah. strength. Yeah, my, my guess was headbutt a rock. Yeah. So I want to go I with think, it anyway. I think mine is secret tricks to win at rock, paper, scissors, right? Because your person really likes winning, yeah? I mean, it makes yeah. sense to me. Okay, my Why are all your... Well, Stevens are just all cheese. <laughs> oh, you liked that article, Soups? It's one of my favorites. I read it last week while I was eating camembert and simultaneously live-tweeting about my experience eating the camembert. I described my feelings about camembert, the article, and you the same way. Intrigued. <laughs> nice. Mm. <laughs> I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. Yes, Ooh, she got a crop I know! <laughs> Whoa, that article sounds awesome. Let me read it. Wait, this isn't even... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. It's We're all doing articles, right? I yeah. got confused. Hang on. Hmm. Step one. Headbutt the rock. Okay, I like where this is going. 
Step two, seek immediate medical attention because you probably have a concussion. No way! This article clearly wasn't written with me in mind. I could easily head with two rocks before I got a concussion. <laughs> Josh, we should work on writing our own head rock headbutting article on camp to rival this pitiful excuse for literature. What do you say? Yes. Hey. Well done, everybody. We, we did it. Everyone's doing it. I love that article. It taught me so many cheat codes to the classic game. How do you cheat at rock, paper, scissors? It's like one of the easiest games of chance in the world. Easy. You just cut the opponent's <laughs> hands off. Works every time. What about me? My hands aren't Holy attached shit. to arms. Your strategy is totally debunked. Shit, you're right. We've been had. <laughs> it's okay, though. We've got this all lady's, summer. This lady's pretty good. I won't lie, Bogo. <laughs> We've got all summer to find a different way to beat Hex at their own game. We'll strategize, strategize once we get to camp. She's great. Yeah, three weeks left. I'm so enough. sad that she's only available through a secret route in Monster Prom. Because oh, she's the this... Slayer thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah she's the she's... Slayer, but she's cursed She's got now, a curse so she's now. a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they I don't know if that's... Out. I don't know if that happened oh, in my grinding. Thank I God. Good job. I'm just, I'm just proud of us all. We really came together, and we did it. We did it. Hey, I can only assume there are secret endings in this mobile guy. Let's go for charm. You're huddled hey. behind a bullet bunker in the throes of a tag, a tail tag battle royale against camp rival camp. You're sure that this is the end. <laughs> You've lived a good life, you think. Next to you is a camp rival camp member shivering and crying and out of ammo. Why guns are part of tail tag is beyond her comprehension. Is this where we die, soups? They sob. Why couldn't camp spooky and camp rival camp just make love and not war? You reach for them as if to bring them into a tender kiss. And as soon as they're in your grass, you take their tail. Fuck yeah! Oh, that no. gives Camp Spooky the win! Everyone saw your sexy ruse, which also gives you plus two charm. Ah, uh, capture the flag. Truly the dodgeball of Camp Spooky. Hmm. Alright, Team Blue! Who's ready to go hard and crush Team Red into the ground where they belong? Oh wait, this is also me. Uh, fuck, how did I do a robot voice again? I am ready, or something like that. I am ready to support my team friend, Dahlia. Doing it for the gram. Okay, pre-game selfie time, not to be confused with mid or post-game selfies. Everybody say Team Blue. Team Blue! <laughs> Wait, friends, Team Blue, look in the background of this selfie. Behind us, trying to steal our flag, is that? I, I have no what idea who this is. What is this? Not ah, me. Shoot. I'm two Looks people like here already. Me. That's right. Team Red will be crushed into the ground where you belong. Wait, Batness doesn't seem super concerned. Why oh, doesn't Batness Badness ever do? <laughs> oh my god, you're right. That's so. <laughs> <laughs> Game sucks. Oh, uh, the braid really. The braid is what really, really helped him to be arrows. Into it. Yeah. And the arrows. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why doesn't Batness seem super concerned? Oh, maybe because I was only the diversion, and the much deeper plan is already in motion. A plan you will never be able to stop. You see, Team Red has had a mole hiding inside your team this entire time. Little would you fools ever have guessed. Look at that face. Soon you will suffer a great and painful <laughs> betrayal. Oh my god. Fucking oh. JoJo face. <laughs> I didn't even Fucking notice. Fucking JoJo on us. This is great. Right, soups? Wink. Um, Soups, are you planning on betraying us? You try to jump in and defend yourself, but Batness is too fast. No, no, of course not. Hey, Soups, are you ready for the Ubble Day o Ross K? Or Ubble Day Oscar? How do you say Double Cross in Pig Latin? Friends, Team Blue, it appears Batness is trying to get a secret message to possibly false friend Soups. Has Soups really been pretending to be our friend all these years just to set us <laughs> up this betrayal and let Team Red capture our flag? Okay, you haven't even been friends with Dahlia for years, much less anticipating a capture the flag debacle. Time to clear your name before it's too late. And yet you've been in league with Blackness, but only pretend to double cross Team Blue and really double cross Team Red. It's a triple cross. That sounds That's smart. That's smart, right? Yeah. Yeah. Research your family tree and reveal that your great great grandfather was one of the original Team Blue founders oh, 150 smart. years ago. <laughs> oh fuck, dude, they both seem smart. They both sound smart. Uh, I, I think the that the top one's probably the top one's gotta be creativity or something. Then the bottom one's definitely smart. It's got research in it. 
Yeah. So I mean, I would go with the top one, right? Because yeah. Yeah. it's hot. My... Smarts is your, just one of your lower ones. Yeah. Or at least creativity is slightly higher than it. Yeah. 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 Good job, everybody. Gasp! Fatness! Is this true? Of course not. Soups is just trying to hide her betrayal. Logical error. If friend Soups were planning on betraying enemy Batness, then enemy Batness would be unaware of this plan and therefore unable to confirm or deny. Wow, Batness thought she was playing us, but she was the one being played the whole time. Bet she feels pretty stupid. No, no I don't, because Soups was never in league with me at all. I made it up to confuse you. So how could she cripple cross me when she never even double crossed you? Mm-hmm, sure she didn't. Sounds exactly like <laughs> so what someone would say to save face after being triple cross. I Got wasn't him. triple cross. I was lying before. I'm not owned. I'm not. But enemy badness, <laughs> since you have just admitted to being a liar, how do we know you are not lying now? Whoa, how deep does this rabbit hole go? Soups is really a mastermind <laughs> for pulling all this off, huh? My grand plan. You're like a cool undercover genius person yeah you're a mastermind of espionage great now team blue is a more united front than ever screw this i'm going to assassinate the chancellor <laughs> my analysis indicates that batness was by far the strongest player on team red and our victory is now all but assured lit victory selfie everyone say team blue but this time no badness in the background the picture turns out adorable as does your victory I mean, your victory isn't adorable, it's more of a slaughter, but as far as slaughter goes, it's pretty adorable. Whatever, just take I your two like boldness and charm time. and go. <laughs> I'd like to take this time to point out Calculester's extreme V-neck. Alright, I've got to double down on this bold. Boldness? Right. Spooky manner. That day in the haunted manner, you find a bunch of ghosts I wonder playing what else craps. I need. You're terrible at gambling, but that's never stopped you before. You face Maybe off against the craps champion. Fun? Uh, could be, yeah. Makes sense to me. Do you Slim. need two, right? Usually? Generally, it's two. There were, like, I think a couple. I think Polly only needed there are fun, a few, as three. I recall. Yes. Alright, I might have to shore up that fun. Mm. You face off against the craps champion, slam all of your chips down to the table, and cry out, I bet my immortal soul! Everyone gasps. Uh -oh. And then someone says, Dude, chill. We're just playing, like, playing to have fun. Nobody's even betting real money. <laughs> Oh, you're not used to such low-stakes betting around camp. Honestly, it's a relief. You bet two boldness against the champion instead, and you win. After that, you happened upon Dahlia messing around in front of her tent. It yes, looks like she's yes. surrounding with bear traps and picture of her, pictures of herself saying, Swipers, no swiping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Josh, how are... Aw, oh, damn it. Dahlia stepped she's in stepped one of the bear traps while walking up to you. She yanks it off her foot and proceeds to mangle and take revenge on every last one of them. Is anyone else turned on right now? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should have known these rusty little ankle biters would never work, but how else can I improve my fortress away from fortress? Josh, maybe you can help me. As you know, I am an extremely accomplished master scout, and the badges I've earned are arguably worth more than gold or love. Oh, that's why it's collect all the badges, yeah. I see. Well, now we know. Obviously, I can't undercut my natural good looks by wearing them all the time, but I don't like storing them in my tent without any sort of defenses. There are Monster Scout badge thieves lurking around every corner, hiding in the shadows, always ready to steal badges. I need to be prepared. I feel like that's at least part of the game for us, is trying to figure out, like, what their personality traits are. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm down for it. I just, I feel like we fucked up a lot in the first one. Except for I, I was just, just, I'm not going to lie. Now I, I just know Milo is into a... cheese. <laughs> Listen, I was just mad because I had a 0% success rate. <laughs> yep. Fair. I, I you, just wanted all as many scenes with Dahlia as possible. You kind of doubt that, but it's cute seeing Dahlia so passionate and worked up about something. In your silence, she goes back to punching the bear traps. Now's a good time to brainstorm. How can you fortify your tent to ward off badge thieves? Make a scarecrow out of the corpse of a previous robber. Scatter a very oh. alluring 1,000 puzzle piece around the tent. Puzzle, a 1,000 piece puzzle around the tent. These ones get so distracted trying to finish it, they won't have time to steal anything. The top one I sounds mean, so bold the corpse to me. One, yeah. Right? Yeah. That sounds bold. I have to imagine. Yeah, I mean... Yeah. Oh, hey, good idea. I was wondering what I was going to do with old Stinko here. Dahlia casually reaches into her tent and pulls out a dead guy. You're unsure if his name was Stinko before, but it definitely is now. 
Yeah, this scoundrel was trying to rob my tent earlier today. He asked to borrow some sunscreen. I said, sure. But then I realized it could all be a clever ruse to steal my badges. So I stabbed <laughs> him just to be safe. Good thing I earned the arts and crafts and rotting biomatter badge last week. Let's make a scarecrow. You and Dahlia get to work outfitting Stinko with some scary costumes, fake fangs, fake blood, real blood, donated by Stinko. <laughs> A butcher's knife, a pitchfork, a real fork, a spork, the scariest of all cutlery because of its unpredictability. <laughs> hey, this is kind of fun. I think I have some glitter left over from my army's attack on the fourth circle, Pride. <laughs> and here's some sunglasses I took from a different guy I killed. Oh, that one got me. So she, your scarecrow project turns into a big game of dress-up, which eventually ends with a fashion show where you drag Stinko down a runway and make him... <laughs> that was dramatic. <laughs> Now give me fierce! Hell yeah! Let's see your game face. Work those rigor mortis calves, Stingo. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. This is the most fashionable guy I've ever killed. No one will ever try to rob me now. Thanks for your help, Josh. Well, Dahlia's right about everyone avoiding her tent. Stinko, in addition to looking fly, sure attracts a lot of flies. You're pretty sure this whole area is a biohazard now. But who cares? Dahlia's so cute when she gets into a project. Stinko gains plus 10 fashion, but all minus all life. And you gain two creativity and one fun. God, my creativity's real high. When that happened. Right. Let's see. Uh, let's go for. Let's see. I feel like creativity might be one of her things too. Yeah, creativity let's lean into creativity. All of your stats are low except so... for charm and fun. So scout HQ. Oh, look you... at that dog. That what day weasel. you happen to take the same monster Bear? scouts class as Mamimi the Oni girl. You didn't get a good oh, sleep yeah. last night, so you ask her if she has any of that weird energy drink she lets you have once during high school. Hey, I she doesn't. That. She doesn't, but she does have some very strange smelling coffee that could help. Where does this girl even find these weird ass drinks? The coffee is delicious, but it comes with side effects. You get an acquired fear of caterpillars, and you gain two creativity in your hair. Hmm. 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 You already knew Aravi was loaded with bravery, determination, and chutzpah, but as she roots through her bag, oh, it's clear she's loaded with some pretty sick items as well. Why are my battle axes plus one through plus two hundred all out of order? I got bored while you were sleeping and arranged them by color. Aravi rolls her eyes and drops <laughs> all the battle axes on the ground to be sorted later. Oh, here, here's that Alexandria's cursed emerald diadem I found in that one dungeon. And may I just say, I'm very cool about not being the only curse in your life. Miss Who? Mishra, you did. How dare you horrified. litter on the hallowed grounds of like Camp her. Spooky? Oh, I'm not littering Camp Director Miss Weaving. I was uh, just looking through my bag for. You're telling me that all these items were in that one small bag? Likely story. And what is this bottle of booze? That's not booze, that's my therapist! <laughs> Oh, hey, it's the therapist bottle. Then you need a second therapist to help you deal with the fact that you keep your first therapist trapped in a bottle. If that were true, which it is obviously not, and I can prove it. Let's see exactly what kind of spirits are in here. If it's Miss Geist's toilet wine again, I swear. <laughs> whoa. Hey, whoa, hey, whoa. It's the therapist. I'll do therapist. Okay. <laughs> Camp Director Miss Weaving raises an interesting point about keeping me in a bottle, Aravi. Do you think you feel the need to keep people physically tied to you because of your brother Sa Sa Salil's disappearance? Salils? I don't know. Salils? So you didn't sneak booze in, you snuck a pet into camp! That's even worse! Oh I'm my confiscating oh no, it immediately! No, no, I don't like her. Put her mouth. Please, put her away. She's not a pet, she's my therapist, and I'll prove it to you by showing <laughs> how calm and level-headed therapy has made me. <laughs> I've been working so hard at therapy, and I'm getting so good at therapy! I appreciate the enthusiasm, but therapy isn't something you get good at. No, I'm slaying therapy! And I'm gonna prove it by- by- Hey, how am I gonna prove how good I am at therapy to Miss Weaving? <laughs> so Miss Weaving gets Nora back. Uh, you've done dream interpretation in therapy, right? Demonstrate analyzing the shit out of a dream. Or this may not be spooky Creative high, people. but you can still ace a test. The ultimate test. The Rorschach test. Smart? I think creativity smart. and smart. Yeah, top is creativity. Go for top. Top? Yep. Hey! Yeah, hey good job! Two. I always ex I always explain in my dreams to Nora, even when she asks me to stop and move on! Well, Aravi. Even though dreams can reveal what's on your subconscious mind, it's so important to confront the realities of day-to-day -day life. But now I'm going to use all that dream analysis to get you unconfiscated. So you can see the therapy trap we set is finally going to be sprung. 
Therapy isn't a trap, Ravi. Okay, you guys, everyone listen to the dream I had, then I'm going to explain the dream <laughs> I had, okay? Yes, everyone <laughs> loves hearing about other people's dreams. This is a well-known <laughs> fact. <laughs> okay, once upon a time, and the time was last night, I went to sleep and I had a dream, and this is the dream I had. I was walking through the woods and I got lost, which is obviously indicates that in real life I'm definitely 100% sure that I'm doing, which is what my song just needed a break from being so sure. <laughs> a bear came out of the bushes and he offered me an ice cream cone. The ice cream was pink, which proves I don't have any unresolved issues with my brother's disappearance. <laughs> Sprinkles on the ice cream cone turned into dolphins that flew to the sky and swam through the clouds, meaning that I am a badass citizen, conqueror of the fairy stars. The bear invited me to croquet. But the mallets were actually corpses of all my friends <laughs> who, who had each been killed in painful, horrible ways as a result of my failures. Which shows that I'm a healthy, well adjusted person <laughs> and therapy totally works. As you see, Cap Director Miss Weaving, this proves that Nora is my therapist and not my pet. I'm going to give you the fairy back just on the off chance she is your therapist. Because you clearly have a lot of issues to work through, Miss Mishra. Ha! Shows how much she knows about dream analysis. A lot of issues to work through. Ridiculous, right, Nora? Right? Right? Nora? Right? Am I right? Tell me right. Right, Stay Nora? Right. Mm -hmm. Aravi, why do you think it's important for you to feel like you're winning at therapy and cured of your issues? Therapy is a process. A process of which I explain my awesome dreams. Let me tell you about the one I had with the wooly mammoths on Booball's Drag Race. Nora dutifully listens to Aravi's dreams, including the part where she and Boko got up to something she won't specify. Nice! You gain boldness and smarts. Hey. Let's trade places. Trade places? No. <laughs> we picked the random. Ooh. Hey, that's the same. It's Nothing has changed since the first, the first round. Okay. Uh, let's hmm. see. I need to shore up that fun a little bit, I think. By going to the Before shore. you go to the lake, you decide to make the most of fun inflatable toy to float that you possibly can. You combine many of your favorite fun things. Ice cream, tabletop games, watching your enemies fail, ducks. The result of Magma Ocean is certainly interesting, even if it doesn't exactly float on water. You decide to name your toy Dr. Frankenfun, or maybe you should name it Dr. Frankenfun's Monster. Just beholding the horror you've created gives you too fun. You spilled apple juice on a power outlet, and you're about to scrape off the stickiness with your metal fork when you see Milo. <laughs> hmm, if it isn't soups, come with me, dear. I need an intern to help me lead a soul into the afterlife, and I'm confident that you don't have anything better to do. You should really take Oof. this as a compliment. Uh. Not everyone has the dogmatic obedience and moral apathy to be an intern. Plus, you'll get paid in experience. Mm. You're looking forward to cleaning off that power outlet, but your fork can wait. You join Milo. They lead the way to a fresh corpse. A glowing soul lingers above the body. Hello, recently dead cutie. I'm your new BFF for your journey to the afterlife. Some call me death, others call me desire. But my followers just call me my madness! The skull screeches loudly. The king has gone mad! Madness! Okay, that was a lot, and to be honest, I don't love being interrupted. You almost ruined my flow. I'll stow it over. Hello, recently deceased dead cutie. I'm your new BFF. <laughs> Listen to my tale of woe, the soul keeps yelling. The mad Mer King, king of the Mer Kingdom, has gone mad. Mm. Psst, this is a totally teachable moment. Newly dead souls always want you to tell you how they died. It's easiest to just let them spill the tea. You agree to listen, so the soul begins shouting their tale. I was the Mer King's master of coin. I served the Mer King with pride and enforced a 180% nice. tax upon the peasantry. Nice. Until the dark night when the Mer King was attacked. He survived but became paranoid, claiming that the attack was a coup orchestrated by his council. He killed us all. But twas no coup. In my dying words, I tried to tell the Mer King, twas an ancient curse upon the ground. That dark night, the Mer King was struck by a vengeful specter. I saw the spectre myself. It took the form of a young woman, and as the spectre passed by me, I remember its stank of tequila and the devil's lettuce. <coughs> oh my god, I'm riveted. The assassination, the coup, and now a ghost? I'm afraid so I might Polly? faint from the drama. Yes. It was Polly, and the last one also had Scott in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah right. I know, listen. right? Thanks for listening. I feel better after telling my tale of woe. You can take me to the afterlife now. I'd love to, darling, but I'm afraid we have a problem. 
I see that you're hoping to bring along some luggage. That's fine, but you're way over our weight limit for oh, mortal possessions. Oh, his heart and nails changed color. No, yeah, did. based on attitude. I think his eyes also have been changed in color. Yeah. Or I yeah, think their eyes, because the, 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 game, the game has been using they for... Yeah, for, yeah. Uh, I mean, I could tell by looking. They over look the weight gay. limit? Preposterous! <laughs> my family buried me in with just 19 satchels full of my dearest possessions. Can't I upgrade to Economy Plus? I'm afraid not, dear. I only give special treatment to relevant dead people, like the ones who are verified on Twitter. It's only fair. Ha! What do you mean I'm not relevant enough for special treatment? I know the Mer King! You call this customer service? I call it madness! Let Ooh, me speak to your I hope manager! He is the manager. Uh oh, looks like this dead aristocrat is going full on Karen mode. Quick, prove your worth as Milo's intern and help them figure out what luggage to leave behind. Leave the stationary bike. You don't have a physical bike now, so there's no point keeping it tight. What about leaving behind a suitcase full of bowling balls? <laughs> oh. Well, I have no idea. I well, actually one, have no idea. The top one's maybe smarts? Right? Yeah. Because there's like yeah. an explanation. So then I think the other one's probably a safer bet. Yeah, every, basically everything is higher than smarts for me. Everything is higher than smarts, yeah. except boldness. Eh? Yeah! Charming. Oh, my charming insert what? is right. Well, I don't know. If you simply sure. leave behind this large suitcase that's filled with just bowling balls, we can be on our way to hell. I mean, the afterlife. Egad, impossible. Don't you see? My bowling balls are my most prized possessions of all. They're rare treasures. I can't possibly part with them. But they'll be useless to you. After all, there are no bowling alleys in the afterlife. We installed a no-greased floors rule after the Great Slippery Soul orgy of 1608. You tasteless fools! These bowling balls are decorative! You're not supposed to play with them! They're each for an important time in my life! Wait, really? I just assumed that these were a tacky weeknight bowling league. I'm curious, why are these balls so valuable to you, sweetie? I suppose I'll explain. See, look at this one! I bought this bowling ball the day after my wife left me. I miss her every time I look at it. Then this one. This bowling ball is the exact same weight as the first baby I killed. When I hold it, I feel like the kind of person who wouldn't kill a baby. This? This was my first bowling ball. My father gave it to me. Right before he said he was disappointed in me, burned down our house, and abandoned my family forever. Stop right there, recently dead person whose name I'm going to, uh, not going to bother to learn. This is an emotional oh, yeah, intervention. I know that you died, and life isn't easy for normal-looking people, but that's no excuse to hide your light under a shroud of sadness. These bowling balls are dragging you down. You need to leave this collection of miserable memories behind. Not because of the weight requirement, but, c but because of the weight they represent on your heart. You... You're right, the soul cries out through deep sobs. I'm going to leave them behind. This weight. I'd rid myself of it. You, Milo, and the soul take the bowling balls back to their home, the bowling alley, and set them on fire as a dramatic gesture of catharsis. It's so moving. I feel so much better now. I feel so light in my heart and my soul. It's like I can fly. Thank you, you angel of death. And thank you, you useless intern. I'm happy that you're happy, dear, and we really should get a move on. I just got a notification about another gig I have to get to right after this. An entire bowling league needs to be escorted to heaven. The cause of death was apparently arson <laughs> and subsequent bowling alley structural collapse. Ha, so random. <laughs> Milo gives you a glowing letter mm. of recommendation and even lets you kill someone to practice reaping. Hell yeah. You gain two creativity and one wow. fun from the rush Look of Look at that. You got, a f you got a full house going on. 5-5-8-8-8. Five, nice. five, eight, eight, eight. I well, I, the only thing I, the only thing I think I would need besides bold would be fun, right? Oh, oops. which Steven did. Oops. Yeah, so bold uh, again, no, I guess. I mean, bold again. I, does anyone, unless anyone thinks it's, it's it can't possibly be creativity. Charms. No, it's not smarts. No, 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 no. So that's, that's I, I'm just gonna, cool. I'm gonna keep doing. I'm gonna do bold again then. All right. I think I just need bold and fun would be my guess. Yeah, you go into the haunted manor with a group, only to immediately split up once you get inside, as is customary. You quickly get lost and have no sound signal, but in the stroke of genius, you follow the signs to the haunt of manners lost and found to wait for your friends to pick you up. You find all sorts of cool lost knickknacks while you wait. Some bloody gloves, a haunted iPod, it only plays Thriller by Michael Jackson. A totally normal Furby mm. that still manages to be the creepiest thing in there. Oh yeah, those things are fucking <laughs> nightmares. In the bottom of the box, you even find two boldness. Yoink! Who in their right mind would throw that away? Later, you're snooping around looking for spooky things when you run into a six-foot wall of impenetrable muscle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Josh, what are you screaming for? This place isn't that scary. <laughs> what, like a few severed heads and visions of my grandpa screaming in horrendous pain are going to freak me out? 
Where I'm from, you can buy that stuff at Ikea. Mm. This is God, what the hell? Is that me in 20 years? No, I can't lose my buff, terrifying beauty. My swollenness is my best feature. I don't know whether I should be offended or smug that my appearance is your worst fear. <laughs> Ugh, what are you doing here, daddy's boy? Someone shut off the AC in your private condo? No, I came here for the same reason I go anywhere. I wanted to set shit on fire. But apparently this building is flame retardant. I hold a blowtorch next to the wooden staircase and nothing happened. It was the scariest shit I'd ever seen. <laughs> No, you tramping here without makeup is the scariest shit you've ever seen. Ha, burn. Don't say burn, that word has no power here. While they argue, you go to find the haunted bathroom to take a spooky piss when you hear the sound of a trap being deployed, along with Damien and Dahlia screaming in unison. You turn back and see them trapped in a fishnet that appears to have dropped from the ceiling. Standing underneath it are a group of teenagers and a Great Dane. Great job, what? everybody, says the blot looking. I know the clueless crew would catch these crooks, no problem. Like, what do you mean, no problem? Asked the skinny stoner teen. Scrooby Dooby and I were scared stiff, <laughs> and like, we're almost out of dog treats. <laughs> Rand Reed, says the dog. Wait, the fucking dog talks? And it's beckoning for the other teen to pass the blunt? Yeah, let's <laughs> let us down right before I stab your eyeballs out and shove them up your asses like anal beats. Jeepies, says the red-headed teen. Mr. and Mrs. Guggenheimer are really that mad that we ruined their plot to drive down the price of this property and resell it for cheap. Wait, you think we're real estate agents? Gross! You think we're married? Look, whoever you think you've got, it's not us. We're not real estate agents. We're demons. We're way more upfront about the whole eternity of damnable torture than most landlords, and don't bother hiding any <laughs> of the details in the contract. Uh, well, that's not entirely true. My dads do make a lot of their money by selling off land in the 8th Circle of Hell. What? I can't believe you, fucking LaVey's. Always abusing your power and speculating with your crappy land. It's too late, Guggenheimer, says the nerdy teen. As soon as I find my glasses, we'll tear those stupid masks off your faces and send you to prison. Okay, but seriously, can someone help me find them? I can't see shit. Seems like these weirdo teens want to rip Damien and Dahlia's faces off, but you like those faces and want to smooch them. You need to save them, using clueless crew logic. Transform your skull into the head of a real estate agent so you can rip off your own face and present yourself as the true villain. Point out that it's problematic that these kids invade people's homes, trap them against their will, rip off their faces without their consent. Who's the real criminal? I mean, the top one's gotta be the one I go It with, feels right? like boldness, yeah. It's either boldness or creativity. And both of those are I pretty high see for you. Any I can't see it's anything. The, the bomb one sounds yeah. like smart, so yeah, the top yeah. one. Yeah. It was bold. You quickly so perform bold. a powerful and very specific spell that you learned for this exact purpose, <laughs> and it works. It hurts like a bitch, but it still works. You run out into the hall where Damien and Dahlia are dangling and rip your face off. You don't feel any better, but it's worth the pain. Zoinks, says the stoner team. It's the real Guggenheimer. Run the rook, screams the dog. <laughs> <laughs> you introduce yourself as Alexander Guggenheimer III, an unscrupulous real estate agent whose plan was to drive down the manor's value and buy it at a quarter of its price. <laughs> Your performance is convincing, especially since you didn't know this property was owned or for sale earlier. Is the persona of this sleazy real estate agent possessing you? Apparently, yes. You end up selling the teens on an even spookier, haunted -er mansion on the other side of camp that you didn't even know about. They're especially drawn in by the promise of an enormous kitchen, wraparound, background, wall... Walls and hallways full of doors that break the laws of physics. You cut down <laughs> Damien and Dahlia after they leave. That was fucking metal, Josh. The way you just ripped your face off like that with no regard for your personal safety. I can't wait to practice it later. Yeah, and I love what you've done with your skull. Like, did you get Botox or something? It really brings out the salesman in your eyes. <laughs> Dahlia and Damien stitch your face back on. It's almost as painful as when you first ripped it off. But hey, they're impressed and safe, and you gain two charm and one boldness. Leave it to me. It's me. It's nice. Him. Nice. Charm again? Uh, or, let's see. What do I say? No. You did creativity last time, right? Yeah, let's see. You're kind of evenly spread here, so. Yeah, let's let's go creativity again because it's low. That day in Monster Scouts, oh, cool. you learn to identify different berries. You all search for berries and berry. try to identify them. A blackberry, a blueberry. But Rachel the deer person finds a very weirdly shaped berry that no one can identify. You all stare at it for hours. It's closer to abstract art than a berry, somehow. It's a true think piece. It forces you to reflect on berry inequality, and although there are no easy answers to the questions it poses, you gain two creativity from the experience. Afterwards, you get stuck in another one of Coach's lectures about trees. Oh no, it's Tony the Tiger. 
And that's why you should never lend a tree your mobile phone, no matter what it tells you. Suddenly, Aravi and Calculester come running out of the woods. They stop in front of you and Coach, panting. Kids, what's wrong? Why are you panting? Because we just hunted down Awilia and surprised them with a fast hedgehog and slattered it for meat. Good survivor skills, but why is Calculester panting? <laughs> to provide moral support for my friend Aravi. And what about Hex? They don't have lungs either, do they? No, I'm not panting. I was just beatboxing. It's my new thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I hate it. <laughs> That's not why we're here. We're here Hex so you can help us figure out what to do with this dumb animal we killed. Robbie drops the Hex. still warm hedgehog corpse on the ground. You can't help but notice the bright red sneakers it's wearing. Maybe those are what made it so yeah, fast. Yeah, they killed Sonic. Finally! I'm honored that you came to me, kids. Cooking the meat of animals you feel is an essential skill in your wilderness toolkit. First, you'll have to... No, 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 no. We know how to cook meat. I'm an expert hunter and survivalist. <laughs> And I have access to YouTube. <laughs> no, we want to figure out how to jazz this dead hog up so it's something people will actually buy. We are planning to start a forest food truck, you see. <laughs> we are thinking of calling it the woods in your mouth. <laughs> but we are at a loss as how to proceed. As none of us have any experience with fine dining, I, for example, cannot eat or enjoy food. I usually just stab uh, random animals and hope they drop fully cooked <laughs> hamburgers or like the mutton. And I subset mainly on a diet of Aravi's angst and everything bagels. I'm sorry, kids, this is beyond my expertise. I know about survival, not haute cuisine. After all, if it was enjoyable, it wouldn't be survival. Good luck. Haute cuisine isn't your area of expertise either. But you know what is? Coming up with bullshit ways to get people to give you money. You suggest... People don't pay for the product, they pay for the brand. Just put some parsley on it and give it an elegant French name. Ooh, Add like some ketchup. One. Ketchup makes everything taste pretty okay. Okay, so the ketchup one's probably the safer one, right? Okay. Because the Right? Because you're basically just trying to avoid the smarts answer. The top mm. one sounds more smart. Or, or creativity. Maybe the, it could be cre creativity. creativity. Also, yeah. it, think, that sounds I... a lot like creativity, actually, now you yeah. say that. What's the the... Ketchup, but ketchup would just be, like, fun, right? Yeah, this one's also cre... Let's just let's try the top. I think it's creativity. It was charm, I guess. Ooh. Oh, it's charm. What? Big oof. Sorry. There's nothing charming yeah, about Fren French food. Uh, yeah, French is very <laughs> sexy. If we use French, everyone would buy our food because of how horny it makes them. But do any of us actually know French? Sure. Boulon, boisson, vachacha, quebouled. No. What does that mean? Nothing. I have no idea. I just made some hot French noises with the abyss that functions as my mouth. Well, it was kind of hot. But I think we're going to have to do better than that. Calculester, give us some actual French words, please, and make them sexy. Request acknowledged. Fetching words of class sexy from language French. Optimal turn found. According to my search, we should call our hedgehog delicacy a uh, menage a trois. Hell yeah, that sounds sexy as fuck. I don't know, I sort of like boulon boson vache chaque Only one way to seculus, Cal, run an online poll to see how many people are into hedgehog menage a trois. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Running poll, tabulating results. Filtering out pornographic Sonic the Hedgehog fan art. One moment, please. Well, is it popular or is it super popular? Unfortunately, it appears the name is in fact extremely unpopular. Except amongst a very small and fanatical subgroup. But I'm not sure they're a good group to base a business on. I doubt they understand that Hedgehog Menage et Toi is a dish or even a real hedgehog, and not a relatively <laughs> sexy anthropomorphic one. Why not? A fantastic, a fanatical fanbase seems like a great place to start. Well, in the search section, in the section of the poll where I asked how much they would mm -hmm. pay for a hedgehog menage a trois, they posted responses such as one big money shot, winky face, that, by the way, was from a user named XXX Shadow the Hedgehog Hot XXX. Nope. No, there's, it's the Hedge it's just Hot. The Hedge Hot XXX. Why don't we 
forget this ever happened. You'd love to, but it's so hard to forget all the other poll answers Cal is showing you. You cleanse your memory so hard, you also forget two boldness and one fun in the process. Hmm. Let's trade places. No. Hey. Blech. 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 It's night time. Let's start a campfire. Oh, Bitch. fuck. Oh, ah, oh, well. here the best is. I'm gonna go sit by Aravi right now. Oh, yep. oh. You're lording by the campfire when you notice Aravi and Dahlia whispering to each other and giggling. You're terrified of both of them, but the giggling is adorable. Ah, Boko, join us. Aravi and I are having our official weekly girl talk session. We both love girl talk. So what? It's a guilty pleasure. If you tell anyone, I'll kill you. <laughs> Bah, indeed. Both Ravi and I are masters of the battlefield, and masters of the fetiment and arts. It's so nice to talk with someone who gets it. It kinda is. Speaking of which, I wanted to ask you, who does your war paint? You were rocking that Furiosa charcoal when it looked when we were beheading those undead beasts. Hell yeah! I do my war paint myself! It's a critical part of my battle ritual. No way. That's sick, Dahlia. I usually have Hex do mine. I kind of suck at blending. One time I tried to do a smoky eye and accidentally set my forehead <laughs> on fire. I freaking Same love though. doing Ravi's war paint. I would do it every day, except Ravi only likes it done for main story battles, and I'm also very lazy and unreliable. <laughs> Me, Push. though. Ravi, war paint should be done anytime you're in combat. It's how warriors channel their inner blood horniness. You gotta do it for <laughs> you, you know? Bullshit. I can't see my own war paint. It makes no sense to spend 20 minutes doing it if it's just gonna keep me the last thing a few side quests orcs are gonna see before they die. I can't technically die, but if I could, I'd want my last memory to be of Dahlia in a Braveheart looking ass blue and white war paint look. Holy shit, I would look amazing in Braveheart war paint, and I've been meaning to conquer Scotland for a while. Hmm. Fuck, that's sick. Whoa, Dahlia, maybe we could do a marching war paint look sometime. That would be so intimidating. Can you imagine? Our enemies would cower at the sight of us. They already do, but they would cower even more. Okay, obviously I'm going to do matching war paint on you two. But what kind of look should we go for? Handprint vibes, urban camo, knife eyes. What do you think, Boko? You're not a war paint expert, but you are an expert at impressing your crush. These two cuties have got pretty different aesthetics, though. What do you suggest? Uh, true beauty comes from what's inside you. That's why it's I make my war paint using tons of blood. War paint is awesome, but when I really want to slay, I reach for my secret weapon. A legendary limited edition prestige battle skin. <laughs> <laughs> Top Stalia, I assume. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, the bottom one is the one you want, Boko. This yeah, it's the bottom. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, you're, you're saying you use skin? The skin is somehow a legend? Boko, I got confused after, like, the third adjective. <laughs> Robby, do you get this? Oh my god, you have one of the limited edition skins? That's super rare. How the fuck did you get your hands on one of those? Seriously, that's so cool. I was grinding so hard to, to get the Mecha Fawn skin, <laughs> and I didn't even get one of the legendaries. Uh, I remember that grinding session. You didn't take a pee break for like three days <gasps> straight. I almost made it through a full season of 90 Day Fiance. Wait, Aravi, I have no idea what you're talking about. This is girl talk time. I demand you explain it to me. Okay, Dahlia, so the first thing you need to know is that there are in-game skins. And obviously, <laughs> everyone starts with the same shitty default skins based on their fighter class. But there are only three legendary skins, and somehow Boko got her hands on one of them. And it's, like, super exclusive. Okay, so you're saying there's some rare skins. But I still don't get how you acquire the skins. Is it a hunting thing? Oh, I get it! You're talking pelts, like, from deer. No, Talia, I'm talking about skins from loot boxes. <laughs> you buy the loot box, open it, deer comes out, you kill the deer, bam, rare skin. What? Huh? These skins cost money? Like, actual currency? Yes, Talia, they cost lots of money. <laughs> they cost a lot of money, but <laughs> weird ass is selling these skins. I don't know, Dahlia. They're either sold by big corporations that benefit from in-game microtransactions, or the actual deer that owned the skin before. Hard to say. Why would someone pay a merchant to get skins when you could just go hunt the deer yourself? This makes no sense! Because it's exclusive and limited and awesome! 
Uh, Valley, you just don't get it. I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're kind of being a noob. Valley is totally confused by Ravi's skin standing and takes, it off, takes off to one, go hunt some deer, and two, meditate upon their valuable pelts. Listen, I know this is a lot to ask. Can I borrow your battle skin just for a bit? I can't believe I'm saying this, but please... Wow, asking for a favor, Aravi, is devastatingly cute. You agree immediately. I mean, the whole reason you got the skin was to impress her. Haha, <laughs> check me out. This legendary skin makes me look like a terrifying golden warrior goddess. Check out my aesthetic, but not actually functional Dio wings. Aravi is clearly overjoyed with your battle skin. And with you, it's a good thing you spent $325 to get it. Totally mm. worth it, baby. <laughs> All right. Now, this one is Mothman, and I am curious what Mothman's got. Uh, but I'm gonna go here. Milo's doing it. I mean, it. I'm gonna have to go to Mothman because. Josh, you could also sit by yourself. There's a one down there at the bottom. What does that do? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna have to do by myself or Mothman because Milo's unfortunately, Dahlia ended up with Aravi. Rip, and you didn't Bogo get to go first. first. Yeah. Milo's yeah. doing their usual review of today's engagement. That's why I said damn, like, right away. <laughs> Calculuster is peering at their phone interestedly. This should be good. So you say that these likes are necessary to your health and well-being. Do they provide sustenance of some kind? Well, they sustain me spiritually in a way. The more likes I have, the better I feel and the better the world becomes. Ah, it is a biopsychological need. Then, to know and be known. I am com comforted that, once again, logic has proven that everything can be boiled down to a science. I have read that other pack animals, like corvids, experience a similar social drive phenomenon. Do corvids have Instagram? Wait, no, Instagram isn't a science. Curating aesthetically pleasing selfies and pairing them with poetic phrases of inspirational genius is a very delicate art form that science could never hope to explain. That's why I'm an expert in my field, darling. It's hard to be the bard. But, friend Milo, because Instagram is a computer-based application, wouldn't it follow that it is rooted in science? Instagram isn't used on computers, darling. It's almost entirely exclusive to smartphones. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that a microaggression? <laughs> smartphones are computers, too. They, merely, they are merely young upstarts with smaller, sleeker appearances. Uh, I apologize, darling. You're right. I shouldn't be promoting technological body positivity. I'll post about it right now. My demographic would love it. Actually, after doing a quick algorithmic scan of all 1.2 billion Instagram accounts worldwide, I have scientifically concluded that the most fleek subject you could post is... Three iguanas in Birkenstocks, reading, <laughs> eat, pray, love. I... what? No, your scientific method clearly doesn't work. Art, you see, is like an eggplant. It... You need to cut Milo off before DreamWorks copyright claims you or something. Can you end the debate on whether or not Instagram is a science or an art form? Calculus, there are lots of things science is unable to explain, like Instagram, the nature of consciousness, and how I feel about Milo. Wink. Milo, you're saying no with your words, but yes with your Instagram profile. While we were talking, you just went and posted the iguana thing. <laughs> as, mu as funny as I think that would be, uh, this is the obvious correct answer. Hmm. Hmm. An interesting thought, Soups but still not entirely accurate. Instagram is scientifically provable to be useful for talking about iguanas. The nature of consciousness resides in organics brain chemistry. And your feelings for Milo are characterized by an increased heart rate, followed by a rush of endorphins that causes dizziness and slight nausea. I believe that you organics refer to this as sexual attraction, more colloquially known oh, as no. a crush or puppy love amongst youths. Either that, or you have dysentery. Calculester's oh, no. blowing up our spot. Yeah, I saw, I saw the penis. <laughs> oh, Calculester, darling, at least warn Soups before you put her on blast like that. In a defense of her obvious crush on me, those may be the chemical processes by which attractions occur, but why do they occur? Can you scientifically explain the burning passion that lives in Soup's heart, nay, the world's heart, when it lays eyes on me? Hmm. Well, when you crunch the data... Darling, this is why you fail to understand the organic experience. You miss the true magic of love and life by constantly using numbers and chemicals to explain things. Sometimes the connections between friends and sweethearts should be cherished, not quantified. 
Ah, uh, I see. Thank you for the advice, friend Milo and friend Soups. I shall increase my qu unquantifiable cherishment of you both by a factor of 17. You're doing it again, sweetie, but I appreciate the sentiment. And I appreciate your flattering sentiment as well, Soups. Dare I say you are the three iguanas and Birkenstocks to my Instagram. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> well, actually, the iguanas and Birkenstocks is sort of the literal iguanas and Birkenstocks to my Instagram. I admit the concept is kind of growing on me. But still, you understand what I mean, don't you? Nope, but what do you ever? The good news is Milo is grateful to you for understanding, for standing by them, and you know exactly what sort of pick to tag them in later. I hope I don't interrupt any conversations. Me, though. So you can right. sit by yourself or talk to Mothman. Or Damien and Joel. I'm not sitting by Damien. Do you want to talk to Mothman? I, I guess we'll just go hang out with Mothman. I think he'll give you a stat boost. Ah, hello, Josh. Thank you for joining me. I love him. Though I must ask, why have you chosen to sit with me, Mothman, instead of one of our six more <laughs> charismatic campers who most of our friends seem to be crushing on? I don't know, because you're not very romance-driven despite be this being a dating sim? Or some other chuckle fuck took the it's log the you wanted before one. you could sit down? Some other chuckle <laughs> fuck took the log I wanted! I see. Well, as long as you are here, would you like to swap scandalizing stories and rumors about people? Yeah, sure, why not? That's kind of what we do here on my log, so if you don't like it, you can get off. Well, you're already sitting down and don't feel like getting up, so if it's gossip Moss demands, it's gossip he'll get. Choose a player to strike with your gossip skills. Oh, oh no. Wait, yourself? What? What does this mean? What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. Who who wants to be stricken? <laughs> I don't know. Stop that. Even it is then. All right. Hey. Uh, choose one. Night vision goggles, flaming AK-47, edible underwear, magical girl cosplay. Edible underwear. All right. <laughs> Hentai addiction, chronic earwax buildup, immaculate chakra alignment, biggest dick energy awards. <laughs> biggest dick energy award. Type in a famous person who's hella dead. Tesla. <laughs> okay. That's how you spell it, right? Yep. Sure. I think so. What a wonderful rumor, Josh. I adored every second of it. You should shirk your desires to flirt with our fellow campers and sit next to me more often. The sour reception out here is total ass, so everyone's bored enough to spread your rumor around fairly quickly. Hey, have you heard the news about Soups? No? Well then get ready to have your shit rocked. Last week when Soups was in line at Starbucks, she just so happened to see famous celebrity Nikola Tesla waiting for their drink nearby. <laughs> Being the giant fan that she is, Soup immediately went over to say hello. Apparently Nikola Tesla was very impressed with Soups' outfit, especially her edible underwear. Then Soups asked Nikola Tesla about the rumors surrounding their biggest dick energy award. <laughs> Nikola Tesla was very flattered by that, and they immediately followed Soups on Twitter. Soups' life has never been the same since. Isn't that wild? I would remember that the next time you talk to him. Soups may not have actually met Nikola Holy Tesla, shit. but everyone who meets <laughs> Soups after hearing this is going to know that she gained plus four charm. Oh, so I guess you can spread a rumor about yourself then. Hmm. Uh, I guess we'll take a gamble. What'll it be then? I don't know. What does that mean? I mean, we have. Oh, this is for the drinking thing. Ah, welcome, welcome. Long. You know here, don't fret. Let me explain how this works. I will prepare you a drink. The drink of the day. You may choose to drink that one. But if you're not interested, you're lucky. There's a mystery box with a second option. It could be better, it could be worse, but one thing is for sure, it will be mysterious. And these drinks, look, choose whatever you want, but I'm not responsible for whatever you put in your mouth. I'm a wizard in training. For you to test my concoction is somewhere between kind and reckless. So, get ready and good luck. Boko. Sake bomb. What do you say? Will you take my drink of the day? Probably a bold something. Would you prefer the mystery box? Hmm. Bomber box. Uh, give me the box. Box? Manhattan. Manhattan. Ah, Manhattan. I get it. The mystery box. So bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. Nice. That's a good one. Is it? What does it do? It gives me plus one stats at every location. Oh. Huh. What do you say? Will you take the drink of the day? This is just whiskey. Or would you prefer oh, the mystery box? Did you box? look up all the drinks? There, there is a work in progress drink chart. Whiskey does nothing. The box it is. Pina Scalata. <laughs> the mystery <laughs> box. Skill bold of you. Hope you're happy with it. No refunds. What does the Pina Scalata do? It's not on... Uh... Wait, let's put it on. Uh, swaps two stats of your choice. Hmm. 
Okay, full I could, moon. I could get that charm. Ah, uh, charm might be important. I should have spread a rumor about myself. I thought it was gonna lower your stats. I'll be I, I also thought that. Quite appealing, What's right? Don't mean? know if I drink that, it but the real question the is, will you? I also have this mystery box, because at this point, who knows what you drink? The full moon? I mean, I'll, the I'll take box? the full moon, why not? Huh? We don't know what it does anyway. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you passed. Your prize is the drink you chose. I don't know why you turned French halfway through. Yeah, it did turn French. A pina scalata. The pina scalata is a concussion that will shake the inside of your own skull. Just two stats and see how the kick of this beauty makes those stats swap. Uh, so I guess I have to. I could just, if I wanted to fucking bullshit it, I could just swap two stats that are already the same. Yeah, you could. You swap two eights, yeah. Listen, I don't live your life. Uh, just do it. I think he needs charm and fun, so... A I... full moon is a full moon, but the Mr. Bass could be anything. It could even be a full moon. True. <laughs> True, Molo guy. But I want to see what it does, so... Uh, I'm trying to decide if I want... Because I don't know if I need... I think creativity, charm, and fun are probably the stats I'm looking at. So, like, those are my highest ones. Just swap two that are the same, you coward, and get it over with. Oh, now we're talking. <laughs> the full moon. The full moon is a very powerful beverage. Not just you, but all of you will need to take sips from it. Careful. Oh. It oh. will open your souls okay. to this beautiful full moon we have together. And this power will shower my... all of your stats, even if it's just a little bit. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Hey! hey we start, God, we I'm only helping everyone! <laughs> I'm so good at this! <laughs> I'm on hot Yeah, yeah I turned an actual in location into a drink. It's so fucking concentrated that everyone has the opportunity to gain plus one extra stat point at every location. You'll oh, be the one with locations. Nice. This part where I leave before you puke all over me. Shall? Thanks, true. Juan. Thank you, Juan. Random. Josh goes first. I go last. All right. So, what do y'all think? Should I take? Should I do some fun training? My bold is already 13. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't see it. Like, I think the highest. What was the highest stat uh, for Vero? Was like 15, or whatever. Yeah, and I like don't that. think Jolly is gonna be that high, right? Couldn't be. You want to just go to fun then? Can't you get, see. Well, you'll get extra fun. I think we'll do fun, because I feel like I'm going to need fun. Alright. I know I don't need smarts. Oh, that, nice. That day you bring a magazine to read by the lake. The cover story is how to gain fun while camping with your six hottest, most charismatic friends. Step one, go to the lake. Step two, wait. What, that's it? And why hasn't that worked for you yet? Oh, wait, you just gained three fun. Thanks, Cosmopolitan. <laughs> You're minding your own business, smelling people. When this Dahlia the grabs you and drives you to the lake shore. Yeah, I agree. Uh, there you are, Josh. Once more, I need your help achieving the best summer ever. Critique my rock skipping technique. Dahlia skips a rock straight upwards. It disappears into space. Moments <laughs> later, you notice a faint glimmer in the sky. It's not Dahlia's rock or the satellite Dahlia's rock destroyed. It's a meteor. It crashes into the woods on the far <laughs> side of the lake, turning them into a giant bonfire. Yes! Ultimate campfire! Quick, tell me some campfire stories, but very loudly. You're about to tell her that one of the horny summer campers who finally boinked, but when you're distracted by a glowing figure approaching you across the lake. Greetings, says the figure in a warm, booming voice. It is I, Kalor, Herald of Summer. Kalor, it's an honor to meet you. Can you critique my rock skipping technique? I'm here on a much more important errand, says the spirit. Your passion for achieving the ideal summer has moved me. I have a quest for you. I have grown weak as of late due to the lack of worship. The heralds of the other seasons mock me and drain my power. I need you to... Destroy them! I'll do it, noble hot man! I was going to say talk to them and ask them to stop being such jerks, but honestly, that sounds great if you're up for it. The first herald you must defeat is Vern, herald of spring. He's in Florida. Good luck. I make my own luck. Out of blood. Blood! Moments later, you're face to face with Vern. It turns out that traveling to Florida is easy. Just mix a can of Bud Light with cough syrup, and you're there. <laughs> oh wow! Why didn't tell me that? <laughs> Sorry, choking. What's up, bros? Says Vern while shotgunning a hard seltzer and thinking about boobs. You gonna defeat me on behalf of that nerd, Calor? Yes, and also to get a tan. A good tan is critical for the best summer ever. Ha! Says Vern, doing three keg stands at once by the grace of his divine might. Suck my Easter eggs, losers! 
No one could defeat me, he says. I'm gonna live forever! Spring break! Woo! You'll just see about that. It so happens that you know the perfect defeat for defeating the Herald of Spring. This feels like you may have stumbled into a secret ending, by the way. Yeah? Yeah. Remind him that spring is just a lame opening act for summer? Allergies. Hmm. I'm feeling more the lower one. I'm feeling allergies too. The only thing that the yeah, top one feels it. like smarts maybe, and everything is higher than that. Wait, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Oh, does They're this waiting. one? Oh, hold on. Do you have uh, a list of correct answers for I've, this? I, I, there is a guide for this route that Josh has stumbled into. Oh. Yes. Pog. Okay. Let's see. Uh, go for allergies. That's boldness. Yeah. Yeah, I knew it. It's in all caps. That's like a key. <laughs> what? Says Vern, noticeably nervous. Ah, no way. A little power isn't enough to destroy the mighty spring. <laughs> oh, yeah? Then how about a lot of pollen? Eat this 50 pound bag of pollen I carry around for exercise slash sex reasons. No, what? I don't want to eat it, cries Vern. I only eat microwave burritos and pussy. He lets out a tremendous <laughs> sneeze. <laughs> ah, take that and this. Dahlia whips out an enormous bag of shrimp and peanuts and starts stuffing them down Vern's throat. <laughs> ah, he screams, stop that. Shrimp and peanuts don't have anything to do with spring. <laughs> Haha! <laughs> spring ship! Spring ship! Spring ship season! Die! <laughs> Turns out Vern actually is extremely allergic to shrimp. Uh, or maybe uh, it's the uh, peanuts. Uh, or the bees. Or the gallon uh, jug of black fluid labeled Vern poison. Whatever the cause, Vern fucking <laughs> dies like a loser and you dance on his <laughs> stunner <laughs> Get dunked Yes! On. Yes! Summer is victorious! Also, I have quite a few shrimp left over. Do you want to have a shrimp party? Hell yes, shrimp party. You dunk them in the Vern poison. and it's harmless to you and actually quite delicious. You gain two creativity and one boldness. Shrimp for success. Woo! I was wondering okay. as Caller was going on, I was like, is this going to be a whole thing? <laughs> it feels like a that thing, I have doesn't to go it? Def yeah, I was like, if I, if I have to go defeat all four of them, that means it's a thing. Let's see. Hell yeah. Uh, want? boldness. Let's go for boldness if I can. Yeah. One day you explore the sure haunted can. manor's basement, Ooh. only to find it has a sub-basement. The sub-basement is full of haunted chairs and a staircase to the sub-sub-basement. The sub-sub-basement is a haunted wine cellar. The sub-sub-sub-basement is a haunted nightclub for ghosts who don't like wine. They serve haunted spirits. Ha! Huh? The sub-basement huh. to the 10th power is a subway. You eat a foot-long Reuben and continue your travels. <laughs> You eventually check a walkthrough and find out the Haunted Manor can spawn an infinite amount of sub-basements. Go make it as far as the 89th level, which is a dumb sub-leather room. You gain plus three boldness from the horrors you witness there. You meet Aravi and Hex afterwards for some yoga, and you're shocked to discover that it is actually yoga. Namaste, Boko. I saw a two-minute yoga video on Instagram, and I'm obsessed. Do you know it involves breathing? How exotic. At first, I was pissed at Hex for making me do this, but I'm actually super into it. So I'm gonna get so fucking relaxed, my head will explode. Did somebody say what? sausages? Oh my god, they're here. No, no Wait, one said sausages. Wait, they're here. Why they're are they here? here? It's okay, Scott. One of these days, someone will have said sausages, and then they'll be sorry. Thanks, Polly. Well, if you guys aren't talking about sausages, what are you doing? We're doing yoga. I even found a pose that's perfect for you. It's called Upward Facing Dog. Oh, we know all about Up Dog and its evil twin, Downward Facing Dog. We're yoga masters with an oh, S. No. Really? You guys know about yoga. Is that why you're so relaxed all the time? Yep, that's why I'm so relaxed all the time and for no other reason. We discovered yoga a while back and found it kind of underwhelming. But we stuck with it and made it better. And now we can probably say that we're the best yogists in the world. Polly, I think it's yoga zoids. Come on, no way are you guys yoga <laughs> experts. You're right, because we're yoga masters, duh. And no one's ever gonna beat our yoga high score. High score, you say? <laughs> oh. 200,000 yoga points in a single session. It's unbeatable. No, nothing is unbeatable. I just need the right strategy. But what is it? <laughs> Yoga pants are all well and good, but to be a true yoga zoid, you need a set of legendary yoga armor. The key to yoga is the okay. sequence of poses, specifically up dog, up dog, down dog, down dog, left dog, right dog, left dog, right dog, <laughs> B dog, A dog, start. I have no fucking clue. <laughs> I have no, I have no idea. Bottom one's a video game reference, so that's fun, right? Probably. So what's the maybe? top chart? Creativity, maybe. I was thinking creativity. Top uh, one. yeah, sure. Top yeah, let's one. go with that top. 
Yeah. But the, but the bottom one's funnier. Hey, it was bold. Bold. Oh, it's bold. Huh. That works out. Legendary yoga armor. I had no idea such a thing existed. You looted the set from your last bloody raid on Lululemon, but never wore it because fuck exercise. Same. Whoa, check out this yoga breastplate. Plus 20 to breathing in and breathing out. And these yoga greaves. Plus 32 flexibility when flanking an enemy. Of course, let's not forget about the boots of yoga. Plus 50 to kicking someone in the face so hard their head explodes. Me meditatively. Thanks for the armor. I'm about to use it to kick some tranquil ass. RV dons the yoga oh armor god. and proceeds to bust the- Oh my god, it's real. It's real. <laughs> RV dons the yoga armor and proceeds to bust the most insane series of yoga moves you've ever seen. Wh what? I don't believe it. Her yoga level, it's over 9,000! Boo! Boo! Robbie yoga so hard she beats yoga and starts over with yoga plus, which she also beats. Turns out yoga <laughs> plus is just did. yoga with more twerking, but you're not complaining. Upon completing yoga plus, Robbie's eyes begin to glow with unearthly light. She floats off the ground. Oh, no! no. It can't be! Wee! I have achieved nirvana! The world of attachments <laughs> no longer has any hold on me. I am free from the wield of samsara, which binds us to the cycle of suffering. Hey, that gives me plus 10 to my wisdom stat. Sick. I'm going to use it to learn a fire spell. Ooh, looks like Arabi's totally not free of the world of attachments after all. Which is good, because you sort of think she might be becoming attached to you. You gain two fun in one of us. <laughs> nice. I'm glad Scott and Polly just showed up. <laughs> just randomly showed up. They just up. showed up to... <laughs> brag about being yoga masters or whatever yeah all right so what do i need i can't do fun i can't do ch creativity wait i can't do creativity hold on <coughs> you can do creativity yeah that's the that's one of the ones i feel like i probably have to shore up so my, my charm is pretty good that day in monster scouts you all learn oh. how to build scarecrows that's mm. vaguely nature related right you decide to take it a step further though you add a magical crystal you found in a cave last month to your scarecrow to turn it into a sentient being Scarecrow is very grateful to have been made alive. You take your new friend out for soda and have a very pleasant afternoon. Then you're forced to disassemble him so the next group of scouts can use the materials. Your scarecrow begs you not to relinquish your gift of life, but you're a dedicated monster scout first. The scouts Jesus. appreciate your dedication to the organization. You get three creativity. Afterwards, you end up vibing with Milo. You're sharing a hammock cuddled up close with each other. And you're both checking your phones. Hell yeah, what could be more emotionally intimate than quietly scrolling right beside your number one summer crush? Suddenly, Milo's phone starts blowing up. Granted, Milo's phone is always blowing up, but right now it's worse than usual. <clears throat> no need to look so jealous, dear. Just a work text. I keep telling the head office not to contact me when I'm taking take a staycation, but I suppose this re reaping is urgent. La la la, another day, another day. Oh, oh my god. Um, this is a little awkward, isn't it? Well, not awkward for you, because you don't know yet, and I shouldn't tell you. But I can't resist what? a little gossip. Listen, Soups, I don't usually disclose proprietary information, but I just got a gig for next week to collect your soul. What? Huh? Um, Milo's gonna reap your soul? That sounds super terrifying and also a little bit hot. You ask Milo if this means you're gonna die next week. Short answer, yep, you're totally going to die. Long answer, life, death, and fate are weird and messy, and it's hard to say 100% because of quantum nonsense, but if I'm getting the gig, yeah, you're gonna die. Congrats! Holy shit, this is the most awkward news you've ever received while launching in a hammock. You start to freak out. No, Soups, don't freak out. I'm an expert, and I promise you, it's not as scary as it seems. Death reminds us of the profound, infinite beauty of life. And, realistically, it's not like you're immortal or anything. Sorry to burst your bubble, but death was going to find you eventually, boo. TBQH, I'm doing you a huge favor by letting you know ahead of time. It's my gift to you, the opportunity to go out with a bang. Let's make this hey. the last week of your life, the best week of your life. We'll spend every moment together and we'll end it with a huge party. A celebration of suits. The whole week with Milo? That sounds like heaven and it's exciting enough to distract you from your imminent death. You're in. Mm, lovely. God, you're going to get so many posthumous followers, I'm almost jealous. Oh, and we should start considering the party aesthetic right away. This feels like it's also a side quest, by the way. Hmm. We'll need something big, memorable, and event at the party. Something that'll honor your true essence, suits. And obvi, it should be Snapchat friendly. Any ideas? Your time to shine. Quick, what's the perfect way to one, entertain your party guests, two, commemorate your entire existence, and three, impress Milo? You will narrate the epic tale of your life through the profound carnal medium of interpretive dance. You'll have your friends give toast to your honor. It'll be, emo it'll be emotionally moving, and everyone will get shit-faced. Two birds, one stone. That one sounds like fun, probably. 
with the shit faceness. This one sounds like creativity, probably. Probably. Oh, but this bottom one might be charm, though. I was gonna say the bottom one might be charm, because of emotionally moving. Yeah. Uh, Good luck. Charm. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Nice. It'll be like celebrating your life by intertwining yeah. it with the lives of people you loved. I had no idea you were so profound, Soups. But if I know anything about drunken party toasts, we're going to need pre-approval on those speeches. We've got no choice but to conduct a rehearsal immediately. You spend the afternoon getting all your friends together and breaking the new big news. You're dying next week. Shockingly, they all seem pretty okay with it. You humbly request that they all deliver a toast for you at the party. And just be safe, you write the speeches yourself. <laughs> All right, lovely people. Welcome to the rehearsal for Soups' elegant end-of-life flow-out bash. Let's proceed with the heartfelt eulogies. <sighs> I can't believe that Soups oh. is dying. I'm, like, totally sad about it. Wow! But honestly, being dead yeah, totally isn't even a thing. Go have more fun. My favorite memory of Soups is when, ahem, she saved a school bus of orphans from falling into a pit of lava using only her mega-thick ass cheeks. <laughs> Damn! Anyway, let's pull one out for Soups and pour another one out for Soups' butt. Those cheeks will be messed. This cannot be for real. Okay, I am the only uh, person I believe I put her. I think I, I can do her because go I've for, done her go before. Go it. Go for it. Okay. Okay, I'm not the only person who is kind of just weirded out that Soups is apparently dying next week. No, just me. Cool. Anyway, Soups was apparently the most emotionally intelligent, thoughtful, and woke friend I've ever had. Here's to you. Soups, you don't think we'll be watching fall for this, do you? <laughs> Ahem! Gather one and all. I will now read aloud a speech commemorating Soups. It is a speech that I definitely wrote myself. Boy, Besides me, badges. Soups is the greatest warrior of all time. Her legacy shall be written in the stars, next to Hercules and Orion. I drink in her honor. What incredible toasts, everyone. I think it's quite clear that Soups touched so many lives, including mine. Here's one last rehearsal toast from yours truly. Soups is a silly goose. We're all aware of that. But we must remember that yeah. geese are some of the sweetest and cutest birds in the whole wide world. Okay. I thought I knew what it meant Incorrect. to really fall in love with life. Watching Soups' constant, elegant failures taught me that lesson all over again. Cheers, Bay. That went shockingly well. You all spend the rest of the day getting totally drunk with your friends to practice for your party. All that to foolery and see three creativity. God, my creativity's so fucking high. Choose a food. No! Come on. No. So many places to go. Uh, I guess let's shore up my fun. Unless Josh needs fun. No, I think you're on your own thing now. I don't think you need it necessarily. As long as you don't fuck up I... the uh as long as you don't fuck up the alternate routes, they tend to just be like, just do it. <laughs> yeah. As Wild I call. And... Or at least Boko's got a list of correct answers. <laughs> Yeet. Mm -hmm. You're in the lake sunbathing. It's kind of relaxing, but hella boring. What's the issue? Have you lost your ability to have some fun while you're playing video games or partying in wild raves? Ah, uh, no, you see the problem now. You didn't put on sunscreen, but fun screen, which has a fun protection factor of 50. You wash the fun screen away some water and put on some sunscreen. There you go. You prevent some sunburn in game 3 fun. There's little more love than... There's little... There's little you love more than loving on Milo, so it's fun to see how many other people are in the same lovesick boat. This comment says, The composition in your selfies is always so artistic. You should go into photography. And this person says, You post the most inspirational quotes. Day equals made. This one just says, H me you with that reaper dick, daddy. Well, assuming all Grim Reapers have dicks and or identify as male is so 14th century Europe. But I am flattered by the sentiment. Love keeping my fandom hooked on my aesthetics and thirsty for all, my all of me. Miss Belladonna, I was expecting to hear a conversation on owning your attractiveness, being true to your identity, and historical monster lore, but what do I find? Uh, exactly the conversation you just described, Camp Director Miss Weaving. No! You on your phone, as always! Probably making blog posts on your TikTok page! <laughs> <laughs> Camp Director Miss Weaving, maybe if you got a social media page of your own, you'd be able to better relate to your campers. It really is the social hub. I don't want to hear it! I refuse to consider the possibility that online interactions can possibly help people form connections or express themselves on the ground that I didn't have the internet when I was your age. 
I am sick and tired of you campers burying your noses in your phones when you could be living in the real world, forming real connections, doing real manual labor. <laughs> this voice hurts. As such, Listen. Nick Spanadona, I am confiscating your Instagram account until further notice. <laughs> just admitted you're not familiar with the internet so let me tell you that's not how it works you can't just confiscate someone's what my instagram account is gone it just disappeared how is that possible <laughs> i told you mixed gallop daughter i confiscated it and there's nothing you can do to get it back that can't be true and it won't be true if you have anything to do about it if there's one way to impress milo it's got to be to get their insta back your plan subject your minds to a mysterious trial of the house of caption to prove you're worthy of retrieving milo's account According to Instagram Terms of Service, any account ownership related dispute can be settled with a grand base at Murder Mountain. Hmm. Bottom's fun, right? Fun or boldness, okay. yeah. Because of Murder Mountain. Murder Mountain, yeah. God damn, you got three real high stats. <laughs> I know. I mean, part of it was that, <laughs> that rumor I started about you gave you four charm. <laughs> I know. Four! So much charm. Bonkers. Trials of House of Captcha sounds like maybe fun. Uh, oh, I got nothing on these ones. Or maybe smarts is what I meant to say. Eh! Yeah! It was bold? Cool. Does that mean that. I think the... it was bold and smarts. It must yeah. have been, yeah. Because of what? Yeah. <laughs> of course, I always forget that Instagram is actually a portmanteau and calculating acumen. Insta for instantaneous. And Graham is an acronym for Grand Race at Murder Mountain. They dropped the second M around the same time Facebook dropped their the. What? That's absurd. That timeline sounds suspect at best. I refuse to participate in any sort of race. I have a summer camp to run. Great. I'll just let Instagram know you're forfeiting the race so they can restore my account to me. Hmm. They're saying that to have an account return, you must make it down Murder Mountain, even if there's no opponent for you to race against. I'm still in if you are, soups. You and Milo take the per perilous journey to Murder Mountain, where you're greeted by Instagram senior executive, beaming it at you with excitement as they explain their rationale. Honestly, Instagram was always an elaborate scheme to get more people to participate in the grand race down our beloved Murder Mountain. The whole thing just kind of spiraled out of control pretty quickly. Hey, you guys invented something pretty awesome, even if it was by accident. So, since I don't have an opponent, is there any time limit on this? Nope, says Insta CEO. Just gotta make it down Murder Mountain alive. Sick. In that case, I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time. Soups, you drive, I photograph? You immediately agree and hop behind the wheel of the official Instagram Grand Race Murder Mountain Racing Race Car while Mar Milo pulls out their phone and snaps a ton of selfies. Oh, I love the way the light reflecting off this lava is hitting my cheekbones. Fierce. Oh man, great leap over the ravine. I'm putting that vid in slow motion before I upload it. Those pythons photobombing me are honestly iconic right now. Well, we did it, Soups. We made it all the way down Motor Mountain thanks to your great driving and my great picture taking. Wonderful work, you two, says the Instagram CEO slash Murder Mountain enthusiast as he reaches you at the bottom. Milo Belladonna, we are free to proud to restore your local yeah, your Instagram account to its rightful owner. You and Milo post pictures of your death-defying yet romantic journey down the mountain, reminiscing about the great time you had way back 20 minutes ago. You'll always have those beautiful memories, plus the pictures, likes, and comments on Milo's restored Instagram. You gain two creativity and one Jeez. fun. I'm the most creative being alive. Josh. Yeet. So it doesn't matter what I pick, theoretically? I don't know, because I think... So sometimes it's like the day events are where you do the story thing, and the night events just sort of happen. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's hard to say. Well, I guess I'll just go to the boldness shack. All right. Bold. While you're exploring the haunted manor, you hear a voice calling your name. It comes from under the bed. Two blood-red eyes stare at you from the inky darkness under the bed, and a voice that sounds older than time whispers, Do you want to gain some boldness, Josh? You say yes, because uh, yeah. you actually do want to do that. Okay, here you go. Whatever that thing is, it gives you plus three boldness. What a nice under the bed thing. You're recovering from that interaction when Dahlia almost tramples you with her rock-hard calves. Nice. Oh, hey, Josh. I didn't see you beyond these majest the majestic silhouette of my own flexing muscles. I've got to stay in top physical condition if I'm ever going to earn my FBI agent badge before the end of summer. You're about to explain to Dahlia how that's a different kind of badge than she probably thinks it is when you notice another Dahlia in the vicinity? Mm. Not sure about that one. <laughs> what are you looking at, Josh? I'm flexing my quads right now. You should be looking at... Me? 
Who are you, stranger, that <laughs> looks almost exactly like me? Explain yourself at once. I don't look like you. You look like me. Because I'm Dahlia Aquino. Ra ra ra. You're not me. I am. You lack the necessary muscles. On the contrary. Since I'm the real Dahlia Aquino, the real Dahlia Aquino looks like this. And since you don't look like this... Gasp! I'm the imposter! But how could I be? Am I such a master of disguise that I fooled even myself? No, you're not a master of disguise. But I am. <laughs> Counselor Fludge! That's right, Dahlia. It was me all along. You couldn't tell because I was wearing a mask. <laughs> your ingenuity truly knows no bounds, Counselor. If only I had had your mastery of the art of infiltration, I might be a make a better candidate for the FBI. Alas, my flawless blue skin and extreme handsomeness render me totally unfit for undercover work. Why, even if I pose as a contestant in a beauty pageant in order to stop a domestic terror plot and a fun-filled romp star in Santa Bullock, I'd likely render myself too conspicuous due to winning so hard. <laughs> Please, Counselor Flodge, teach me your ways. I am willing to devote all my time to this, eschewing all, eschewing all romantic relationships in the meantime. What? No, fuck uh -oh. that. Show Dahlia you're the better camouflage tutor by suggesting someplace where her natural assets would really help her blend in. A utopian society of both smiths, <laughs> a Dahlia Aquino cosplay contest. Well, that one sounds smart, the bomb one, right? Yeah. So it's gotta be the top one. Probably. I assume. This, yeah, I'm this going one, with buff smurfs. Creativity could be creativity, could be fun. Either way, it's higher than four. That's a fantastic idea, Josh. A true master of disguise always changes their surroundings to match their appearance. That's why I carry around at least three life-size statues of myself at all times. You make a great disguise <laughs> instructor. That sells it then. I'm off to kidnap Buff Smurfette and take her place <laughs> as the sole female citizen of Buff Smurf Village. Dahlia heads mm. off to execute her cunning infiltration while Counselor Flodge blends into the scenery by stepping behind one of his life size statues. <laughs> oh. A couple days later, Dahlia tracks you down and nearly clotheslines you in her enthusiasm. The last few days have been an orgy of discovery. I've flown Buff Smurf society wide open. At first, I was worried that they'd notice I'd replace Buff Smurfette because I'm taller, buffer, have horns, and never say the word Smurf instead of the word I actually want to say. <laughs> but the others never noticed the difference. It's like being female prevented them from being able to give even the smallest fraction of a shit about who I was. <laughs> at first, I was delighted at the success of my undercover mission, but then I began to wonder. What if going undercover in Buff Smurf Village wasn't my true mission? What if being undercover was just a cover? Dun, 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 dun. That's when I realized the truth. I was an undercover journalist posing as an undercover <laughs> officer, posing as a buff smurf, in order to write the expose of the decade. I published my first-hand experience of, as an incisive article, critiquing this buff smurfette effect and the harm it has done to buff blue women everywhere. Anyway, I should probably go untie buff smurfette now and <laughs> let her go home. My good deed is done. You wave goodbye to Dahlia, content in the knowledge that you've helped to make the world a better place. And with that statue of Counselor Flodge just wink at you, you gain plus two charm and plus one foot. Babe. It's me. What? So let's see. What? Uh, what places do we have available right now? The woods, which is uh, smarts. Uh, the camp no. dome, which is uh, charm. And the scout HQ, which is creativity. Let's see. Josh and I both have some absolutely fucking banana stats, and then yours are just kind of okay. Charm. <laughs> yeah, Charm. I, was, I was adding up our total amounts. You have a total of 55. <laughs> which is four higher than me, which is the four I gave you with the rumor. <laughs> I'm anyway, a fool. Charm. That day, the account dome, you play Never Have I Ever Extreme. Every time someone mentions something you've done, you have to cut a finger off. Besides the finger uh, part, this is finally a great time to brag about all the cool illegal things you've done. You're the first out, and while they're sewing your digits back on, you get to regale your friends with stories about how you robbed a bank while wearing your grandfather's skull as a hat. You're so cool. As they s Also, they sew you plus three charm to your left hand by mistake. Nice. Afterwards, everyone begins a rousing game of paintball and said the paintballs are actually bullets. You, unfortunately, were taken nice. out of the game for being a conscientious objector. Even more unfortunately, the two players you'd like most to hump are currently arguing behind a bullet-riddled paintball bunker. Don't tell me how to live my life! If I want to hold this gun the way I, this way when I shoot it, that's my business and no one else's. But holding it 
sideways this completely defeats the purpose of lining up the sides of your shot. It's suboptimal. But when I hold it sideways, I look like a gangster. You're gonna look dead in a minute if you don't cover me right now. It's you wouldn't need to be covered if you didn't runner. bring a fucking crossbow to a gunfight. Hate all you want, Damien, but there's no disadvantage to shooting a crossbow sideways. At least no more of a disadvantage than having brought a crossbow to a gunfight in the first place. Rat, thanks, Hex. You accursed objects have always the best suggestions. No one is listening to you as you conscientiously object to Damien swapping out his gun for Robbie's bonus crossbow. Well, at least there's no way this could possibly get worse. No, but there's a way it could get better! Don't give up, guys! Four, Stop. three, two, one! Crossbows are better than guns! Cut the chanting mongrel! You're giving away our position. Why the fuck are you cheerleading anyway, Scott? We could use your guns in this gunfight! I decided to sit this game out, partly because I'm not anybody's primary love interest right now and therefore have no reason to be in hilariously dangerous situations, but also because I'd rather cheerlead. Guns aren't nice, but cheerleading is nice, so cheerleading your gun friends is nice. Well, hey, you know what? Could be even nicer. Not selling us out to the enemy team by shouting where we are. Oh, you want me to throw them off? Okay, bad guys, listen loud and clear. <laughs> Davy and Ravi are not here. Nice work, bud. What would we do without you? Hex may live for the chaos, but you'd rather Damien and Aravi not get shot. There's no way you're going to talk Scout out of cheerleading once he's into it, but maybe there's a way to make him actually useful. Kevlar pump -ups. Make up a cheer that is extremely cogent argument for gun control. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Let's see. Probably smart. Kevlar pom poms is fun. The, the bottom right. one is definitely smart. Yeah. Which, or the top one. Yeah. yeah. The so make up the cheer. Anything would be better for okay. that. Okay. Let's go for the bottom. <laughs> Fun. No. What the hell are you talking about? Where are we gonna get Kevlar pom poms? Why do <laughs> you have Kevlar pom poms? Look, there's no time to explain who did and didn't happen to have a cheerleader kink and a Kevlar underwear kink at the same time right now. Um, we weren't talking about that at all. But you don't have to voice every thought you've ever had aloud, you know. Did you hear Boko? She said we have no time to discuss that right now. Scott, get to cheering. Hooray, I'm helping! Go team, don't get shot! Drop that Kevlar like it's hot! Give me a K, give me an E, give me a Vlar! Kevlar team is an all-star! Scott's cheers are mediocre at best, but the important thing is that the Kevlar is blocking the enemy team's bullets so that Damien and Aravi can get within range of them. Okay, line up my shot, go with the poison tip tail, pull back the- Fuck that noise! Eat Kevlar, dick toes! Damien successfully bashes in the enemy teammate's skull with the Kevlar pom pom which is surprisingly effective because they weigh like 30 pounds each. Oh, well, Reforest works too. Fuck yeah, you and your friends break as many an eye socket with your Kevlar pom-poms, and throwing them around also makes you guys super buff. You get two Ooh. boldness and one foot. Trade places. No! Hey. Damn. I'm so bad at this! I'm so bad at RNG! Oh, thank God, it's Calculester. Yeah, Woo! They're all separate this time. We did it, everybody. We you did something it. Strange. Damien isn't fucking with the campfire at all, and Milo is looking at a phone other than their own. You've got to get a closer look. I just don't get it. I'm putting my heart and soul into this YouTube thing, and I'm not getting any responses. Oh. Mood. Is there something hey. wrong with my videos? Hey, they can no we good? not do this one? <laughs> <laughs> no, of course not, darling. Your content is fantastic. Especially this one here. Cut crease with the blood of your enemies prom makeup tutorial. So fetch. It's your demeanor that's the problem. You need a complete personality rebranding, and completely overhauling other people's personalities is what I do best. Mm. For example, perhaps instead of opening your videos with what ups noobs, let's fuck with fuck up some foundation, you could say let's put some of that inner beauty out the outside. That sounds really stupid. But you really should be scripting your videos to be more watchable. Oh, why How not rude. give your followers a cute little name? That way they can identify no. with you and bring in more individuals to watch your channel, like a hive mind. Maybe you could mm. call them the Damiacs, or the Laveri Obsessed with Makeups. Just make sure it's short enough to be used as a hashtag. That's what really gets the ball rolling. What about the fuckholes? That's what I've been calling my viewers all this time anyway. Hmm, <laughs> but that doesn't sound very advertiser-friendly. Who That's gives a shit? Look, Milo, <laughs> the fuckholes. <laughs> I know you're trying to be help, but all these ideas are super uncool and not metal at all. Hey, I'm helping you get subscribers, not act like a little red punk. People don't like metal, they like being reassured that their insignificant existences have value. 
It's vital Power to mortals to find communities that feel important before they die. That's what influencers are for. Great, thanks, Milo. That got fucking dark. Maybe now is the time for you to offer one of your patented unsolicited ideas on how to boost Jamian's channel. Take inspiration for your brand from a more successful brand, like Milo's. Just try to be more like Milo. In the end, you can't spell Damien without Milo. Uh, mm. Want a brand that spells metal? You can. Forget about online branding and go back to offline branding with a branding iron. Hmm. What? That makes no fucking sense to me at all. No, Soups is making perfect sense. The world would be much happier and more beautiful place if people would just try to emulate me. I mean, I think perhaps hmm. you could check your spelling, but everything else you said is absolutely true. Feel free to use my brands as an inspiration for your fun little makeup startup, Damien. There's all sorts of things you could learn from me. Proper eyeshadow blending techniques, vocal inflection and cadence while you're hyping yourself up versus humbling yourself down, how to... How can I say this politely? Well, how to use Facetune correctly. Wow, I'm amazed by how generous I am lending myself for inspiration. It almost inspires me, and I've always said that everybody in this world should inspire each other hard. Yeah, you got a real fucking... Yeah, you're a real fucking Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, aren't I? Gee, I wonder if I could branch into this more. I'm sure there are tons of brands that can benefit from behaving more like me. Like Disney. They're nice, sure, but they haven't got a generous bone in their body. Just look at what happened when they tried to share with Sony. On that note, what about the steaming business success in general? Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. I'm sure all of them could benefit from a nice generous coat of Milo paint. What wondrous ideas we have together, Soups. Come, darling, help me draft some emails. The two of you quickly forget about Damien while you single-handedly try to solve the pay-for-streaming crisis. You fail miserably, but it's a fun bonding experience regardless, and Milo even lets you touch their phone. For an Instagrammer, that's basically second base. Let's start a campfire. Boko, this Woo. one, I assume. Oh, I'm going to be doing a lot of talking. Go ahead. If only I could make it's you advance you the text, because I need a drink. I've done that. Listen, my throat is destroyed. <laughs> After finishing your Go daily push-up, it's time for... <laughs> It's time for a break. You head to the campfire and find a Robbie Hex Daily and push up. <laughs> that, that got me. Enjoy. Chillin' and s'morin'. And time. Yes. Now that I've toasted my marshmallow for exactly 128 seconds, it should be, be perfect to go to the ground and give me a huge defense buff. So, hey! Where the shit is my marshmallow? Do you mean the marshmallow that you had on the end of your stick that you were holding in the fire? Because, yeah, I ate that one about 127 seconds ago. God damn it, Hex! How many times do I have to tell you not to fuck with my stats? If I die in a raid, you're going to be out on your sorry ass. Granted, you make a good point, but here's another compelling argument. Marshmallows are so good. Oh my god, marshmallow. <laughs> you two are adorable. This new bicker reminds me of the early days of the coven. You're bound together by fate, even though it seems like you have nothing in common. You'll find some common ground, learn to work together and figure out that you're stronger together than apart. Ah, season one. Those were the golden years. <gasps> no way. I'm not a team captain, Joy. I'm a lone wolf. Just look at my fangs. Aravi, wolves run in packs. I'm surprised <laughs> that you don't know that because I've seen you kill like at least four wolves. Yeah, and I kill those wolves by myself. Trust me. I've tried every team comp possible. I've played Paladin with Light Cleric and Lore Bard. I've done two tanks, two DPSs, and two support. I've even tried a team of six super intelligent, genetically engineered gorillas, and none of those teams can keep up with me. Hmm, I get it, but I think you're underestimating teamwork. I miss hope and faith all the time. There wouldn't be a coven without them. Literally, a coven is at least two witches. And teammates can cover up for your weaknesses, like when Dimitri tried to use his seduction pheromones on me. I might have given in, but Hope cast a stuffy nose spell on me. Yeah, but teammates can also be a huge pain in the ass. Like what, I'm supposed to share my hearty and green potions with you? I only have two in my inventory on a good day. This is why I love being a curse. It's kind of like you're on a team and solo at the same time. Like we're intertwined 24-7, but I also steal your beef jerky at will. You know exactly what this argument needs. Your unsolicited opinion. You chime in, ready to impress one of these hotties by blindly agreeing with them. Team structure allows for zany subplots. Also, you can split the cost of an Uber, saving you approximately 550 per ride. Going solo means you can keep all the sweet experience points and level up faster. Probably that one. Yeah, it is that one. 
Um, I hate to burst your stats bubble, but I'm pretty sure that's not how experience works. Psh, I can prove you wrong right freaking now. Here, name any human experience and I'll show you. Okay, how about the ineffable beauty of seeing the sunset and reflecting on how lucky you are to be alive? Try juicing experience points out of that. Easy, challenge accepted, boss witch. Ravi runs off and returns two hours later, right after the sunset. She looks pleased with herself, so you should figure she was either one, right about experiences, two, killed an orc, or three, boom. <laughs> hey guys, turns out the sun kind of looks like an over-easy egg when it sets. Who knew? Alrighty, you two, check this shit out. Experience, watch sunset and reflect, enjoy being alive. Complete! From this experience, Ravi gains six experience points. You didn't even realize experience was a stat in this game. Okay, I get that you have some weird numbers you're tracking, but come on, did you two learn nothing from the beauty of nature? Can't you appreciate a sunset for its own sake? No! It's like I always say, leveling up is the purpose of all consciousness. I literally do not do anything unless it earns me experience. Why would I? Um, maybe because doing beautiful things creates warm, wonderful memories that you all have forever? No, that's bullshit. My girl Ravi's right. Oh. It's all about the stats, baby. Oh, and by the way, you can use experience as currency at 7-Eleven. I just looked it up in my narrator's almanac, and that's actually true. <laughs> I'm on my last <laughs> nerve with you two. Just think about the time we went to the amusement park together. We had fun. It was the start of our friendship, and we ate cotton candy. And now admit that our day at the amusement park is a lovely memory and not a heartless attempt to get experience points. Oh yeah, I totally remember that. Our day at the amusement park. That was so awesome because I got so many points from the cotton candy that I finally hit level 13. You're shocked that Robbie has reached level 13 because as far as you know, you haven't leveled up at all yet. God, how bot are you with this game? Joy, kind of makes sense that you didn't get experience because the, the coven is a team of three. That means you have to share all your experience points. You're probably getting so few points yourself that you're not even noticing them. Did I just get experience shamed? Ravi, I'm out of- I'm out of here. I'm going to read a book so I can feel good feelings and not get some fucking made up points. I guess I should say thanks. You helped me prove my point. Maybe we could go XP grind together. I don't mind sharing the points, as long it's as it's with you. They're also different characters. Right. Some different characters. Yeah. Well, different but... romanceable characters. Right. No, some the other different characters, The old characters <laughs> just kind of show up sometimes. Yeah. Plus, if I let a level 1 player like you wander around alone, you'll get killed by a gust of wind or an ant or something. Hell yeah, you hang out with Robbie for hours. You still don't have enough points to reach level 2, but you do unlock the slowly winning over a Sundari skill tree. Oh no. Josh. Uh, this one, I assume. Yes. Josh would be doing a lot of talking. And yeah, then you just, you just put me by myself. Ah. Laughably, laughing raucously. Oh, hell yeah! This is a great picture of us, Cal. The Coliseum and the Forum were so cool to see in person. God, I love the Romans. So many training facilities, ancient armor, literal centuries of bloodlust soaking into the soil. I can't stop fangirling. Yes, they were truly fascinating. But I must say that seeing the Olivetti headquarters in person was the highlight of my Italy experience. Being in the presence of one of the earliest computer manufacturing companies in the world was a dream come true. Yeah. Hell yeah, Dusty. It's the guy I always pick. The Shadow Guy is the best. Yeah. I hope I made my ancestors proud. <laughs> oh, hey, Josh. Want to look at our scrapbook? We were just reminiscing about the trip to Italy we took last month. She shows you the scrapbook. You get the impression that it was a joint product. Some of the pages are decorated with bone fragments and motivational glitter stickers, and others were clearly typed up and printed straight out of Microsoft Excel. <laughs> we had an amazing time. I was fascinated by all of the churches, and even more fascinated by the beautiful, meaningless rituals organics performed there. Yeah, unfortunately I had to sit those places out. The Pope doesn't really seem keen on laying someone with horns into the Vatican. <laughs> but it's cool. I commandeered a gondola in Venice, <laughs> and we had an all-out naval battle that I totally crushed. Yes, incidentally, we are no longer allowed to enter Italy. 
Mm. But there are lots of other places to visit. I'm thinking Britain for our next trip. Let's keep that ruthless War Machine Empire's theme going. But Britain would be nice, but I am partial to Japan. Their technological advances intrigue me so greatly. I also have an uncle who works <laughs> at Nintendo as a copy machine. Josh, you could come too. There's always room for more on the Dal and Cal Express. A vacation with Dahlia and Calculester? Where do you sign? Wait, friend Dahlia, I am also happy to invite Josh on our next trip, but what role will he fulfill? Ah, oh, you make an excellent point. A true master of war knows every member amongst her ranks must be absolutely necessary. An apt comparison. You see, Josh, on our previous trip, I acted as the perfect trip planner, organizing our activities in color-coded spreadsheets. I, I was the morale booster. I was going around screaming, Look, it's the David! Look, it's the... I don't know. Ufazil. Ufaz Ufazi. Sure. To maintain the hype and to make sure that everyone knew what they were looking at. Hmm. Besides horny one and gamer, what role could you fulfill on a vacation with <laughs> Damn. Got him. You could be the backup memory. Calculester's memory could be overridden, and Dahlia puts herself in danger so often that memory loss is a very real possibility. You could analyze all of the country's weaknesses to ensure you could defeat it in the battle of tourism. That one. Yeah, it's the second one. It is that one. Oh, hell yeah! That's an amazing idea! You're hired! I mean, I loved our trip to Italy, but I do kind of regret not doing more research into their weaknesses sooner. Like their pizza and pasta, clearly inferior to the Olive Garden, <laughs> and their wimpy parliamentary republic. What happened to Caesar? Did he die? That's not very heroic. <laughs> no one tell her. Not to mention their surprisingly squishy skulls. I would have thought the Roman residents would have retained some of their ancestors' strength, but apparently Whoa. not. I tested this myself, actually. My research concluded that Italian skulls are not resistant to attacks <laughs> from a morning star. Weird. After that, the police showed up and totally confiscated my morning star and arrested me. Probably because they were scared I discovered the rest of their weaknesses. What? Where was I when all this happened? In the Vatican, I think. I told you I used that time to check out some old dungeons. I thought you did so in a tourist capac touristic capacity, not because you were in temporarily imprisoned in one. Meh, <laughs> details, don't worry. If only I'd known Italy's weakness profile sooner, I simply would have brought more morning stars. But I'll be prepared next time, thanks to you, Josh. I can't wait. Yeah, neither can you, as long as you get to be there when Dahlia's swinging your morning star, that is. Just the thought is already getting you hot and bothered. Hmm. Bring out your flask. Bring out your flask. Drink time. I'll take a gamble. Take a gamble. Weekend arrives, and so it's time to visit Juan, the small magical Latino cat. Look who's here! Welcome to my bar! I don't know why he's French. Really, I don't yeah. know who's ever Because you can only do French voices, i.e. Kestrel. I guess you have more thirst than common sense. Anyway, check this drink out! Not the bees! But the really <laughs> oh my great. god, you I don't know if to. I drink that, but the real question is, will you? <laughs> I also have this mystery box, because at this point, who knows what you drink? I don't want to drink the bees. <laughs> Babe, drink the bees. I drink don't want the to bees. What's the bees do? Drink the bees. Please tell me it, what the it bees will not does do, first. It will not do anything bad to you. You will not lose stats. I will guarantee this. Even if you lost stats, who the fuck cares? <laughs> Fair point. You'd have to lose so many stats. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing your common sense. And you've asked your prizes, the drink you chose. A margarita. Why the billing, right? I don't know. I drink the bar. It's a little mystery box. Do you want the margarita? Yeah, let's eat the margarita. All right. Give me the margarita. Yeah, no, totally. I was testing blood. You passed mm. drink. The classical palate. Why the billing, right? Don't know if I drink that, but the right, references will use. What am I looking mystery. at here? A creativity All locations of some kind of super. Josh, I want you to eat it, please. Okay. What is it? All locations become more beautiful. Nice. Pictures I locations are replaced with artsy style pictures. For Ooh. The rest of the run. Oh hell yeah, take it. Sure. Drink the paint. Drink the Drink paint. Drink the paint. Drink the. <laughs> Wait, why am I chanting? I'm the one doing it. Margarita. So you want yeah. to drink a margarita, huh? To think that by drinking a brain you absorb its smarts is a bit simplistic, but hey, it's what actually happens. How comes razor at its finest? Nice. E Jesus, that was like plus, plus five. It is plus five. During Spooky High, bees poured out of your mouth, remember? I do remember that. But when Spooky Camps, the bees pour in. 
You actually just drank a bunch of bees. <laughs> it's so epic from that day on. Everyone knows you as Nicholas Cage. <laughs> named it Nicholas Cage. That is why I made you drink it. <laughs> I can't believe this. What is drink the classical palette? I tried to honor the beauty of art and devotion. I denounce the end or beauty of the world. All locations will become more powerful. Just bask in it. Okay. Hope you can stomach that. Happy trails. What does that mean? Fucking my name is Nicholas Cage. <laughs> you're, you're just Nicholas Cage. God, I'm really bad at this. Nicholas Cage. All right, I guess I'm Nicholas Cage now. Um, so, so it doesn't matter where I go today, right? Theoretically. I don't think so. Theoretically, I think you'll still get the like the initial points. The then it should take you but to then the, the arc you're on. Should be okay. Yeah. You don't. You don't. Neither Jeez. of you want to go to this, do you? The camp dome. What's, no. What point is that? I was, I was just gonna go to the lake again. I think. What's my What's my charm looking like? Ten. Ten. Hmm. When did my boldness get to seventeen? Uh, it's not. It's not. You look at the wrong one. Oh, sorry. It's looking in the middle. Uh, You're 11, 11, 8. 10, I, I'm, 10. I'm gonna want to go there. Okay. You do the smarts one, Steven. No one yeah, I guess. That. I guess I could just shore up my smarts. Your stats don't matter anymore. Let's be real. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you hike deep Holy into the woods and find a mysterious journal with the number three on it, half buried in the dirt. That's a Gravity Falls reference. Inside has a ton of information on local monsters and how to defeat them. Covers gnomes, psychics, time travelers, Illuminati shaped demons. What a boring journal. Where's the drama? Where's the inner thoughts and insecurities about school crushes? Over up this journal knew nothing about how journals work. You gain no fun from this, but surely get plus three smarts. Boring. Since you're dying next week, Milo has been helping you live your last days to the fullest. Ah, so you are Cur nothing. Yeah. Currently, the two of you are getting a super fancy pedicure where little fish eat the dead skin off your feet. It feels amazing and it's hella IG worthy. Ah, oh, that really hits the spot. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Fish give better pedicures than people. And I needed some R&R. &R. This non-stop life celebrating with you has been all-consuming. But honestly, I can't remember the last time I had so much fun. Milo looks at you with such bedroom eyes. Your heart starts to race. It's a tender moment. While we're enjoying this tender moment, I thought we could talk deeds for your end of life, Bash. I've been really immersing myself in the preparations, Nicholas Cage. This might be some of the finest party planning work of my entire career. First off, the venue is insane. I got my boss to let me borrow her interdimensional penthouse. The ceiling is made of diamonds, and the bodyguards are literally four-dimensional. I'm going to do this huge, dramatic entrance for you where you burst out of a coffin. Cute, right? And the coffin outfit is pretty the perfect amount of slutty, trust me. Oh, and you're not going to believe the guest list. All the basics, sure, but we have some huge gets on here. I did not realize you had this kind of pull, darling. Keep it on the DL. We've got several prominent ghosts coming. Both Edison and <laughs> Tesla, so things should get interesting. Again? Again, but still, I feel like one. something's missing. I think we need a big, mind-blowing VIP surprise guest. Someone who can show up halfway through the party, uninvited, and have a poetic final embrace with you. A real moment, you know? Does anyone come to mind? Maybe a long-lost twin from whom you were separated at birth and have never actually met? Malo's right, you definitely need to kick out a special guest for your party. You don't have any long-lost twins that you know about, but you do know the perfect VIP to invite. The obstetrician who was there for your birth. He ushered you into this world and he ushered you out. This party's all about you, so summon alternate versions of yourself from other timelines. It'll be poetic and awesome, like when Beyonce looks in a mirror. <coughs> hmm. 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 I don't know. I don't want to be fit, and Boko doesn't have a guide for this one. Let's see. I have no idea, yeah. Yep. No guide. I've found several, like, sort of half-finished guys. None for this one, though. Uh, yeah, no, I don't see anything. Shit! Alright. Well, uh... That one sounds creative, probably. And my creativity is quite high. This one could be smarts, maybe. Eh, fuck it. Yeah! Yes! Oh, That's good call. Nice. Multiverse Good selves are such a thing right now. Let's do it, Boo. You and Milo finish your pedicures and then go ask Joy to perform a summoning ritual. Your alternate selves are other timelines. Joy says she can do the ritual, but it's super difficult, dangerous, and it'll cost her some of her life force. You and Milo assure her this is a matter of life and death. She's a competent-ass witch of sorts, so she rips open a huge multiverse purple. 
portal. It's purple pulsing and she yanks like eight different versions of you out of that thing. Oh, this is absolutely precious. It's a rainbow of Nicolas Cage. <laughs> you gather around your alternate selves and give them the lowdown. They're here to be your party guests. As There's you face so your many Nicolas Cages death. here now. Oh, that makes perfect. Oh, that makes, oh, sorry, that makes perfect sense. That's one of the Nicholas Cage's. You know, no, my universe. universe. I actually saved the world from two separate nuclear apocalypses, but I oh, never had the true strength to face my own mortality. You're so brave, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> totally, says another version of you. You're the most heroic one of us all. Soon to be dead, Nicholas Cage. Hip hip hooray! I never thought about it before, but I suppose you are pretty heroic, Nicholas Cage, and you're naturally popular, which is even more important. Your multiverse selves all agree to chill out in this universe until the party. You get to know them a bit, and, by, and the best one by far is Centaur, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> she is exactly like you, except she comes from a universe where everyone is centaurs. Everyone here is bipedal. God, what a mind trip. Hey, Milo and original Nicholas Cage, want to take a ride? Nay, says Centaur, Nicholas Cage. <laughs> now you gotta take Josh's Centaur face. Centaur with Nicholas Cage oh. on Nicholas Cage? Oh, that's completely <laughs> on brand. I'm in. You and Milo hop onto the centaur version of you. The three of you go on a super romantic ride. The wind blows through your hair. You're happy to be alive. And if we're being honest, you're super turned on by this whole multiverse Milo experience. You gain plus three fun and a fun new fetish. Leave it to me. Hmm. Where do you want to go, baby? Okay. The dome. Uh, the dome. Let's see. The dome? Yeah. That's I where did you say said charm. Yeah, it's going to do charm. Okay. Dome. You just specifically requested <laughs> to go here. Nice. Oh. Another day at the camp dome. Another day trying to survive a deadly battle royale game. You managed to murder 10 people in 20 minutes. What a feat. The audience nice. roars. This will certainly give you a lot of boldness. But wait, the Camp Dome should make you gain boldness, but charm. Even if that doesn't make sense, you want charm. You think quickly and make a fancy hat out of the guts of a corpse. The audience says, wow, Gansy 3 charm. Much better. You wind up in the dome playing a game of extreme dodgeball against Camp Rival Camp. You have a super weak wrist and you're afraid of balls, so you volunteer to guard the jail. Mm -hmm. Jail is really just a chalk square on the ground where you're keeping prisoners from the other team, but Joy, Ravi, and Damien are all on guard duty too. Your jail only has one prisoner, but he's a doozy. It's Morty the Minotaur. He's from Camp Rival Camp. He's the sexiest, over-sexualized half-man, half-bull you've ever seen. Oh, my. Wow. <laughs> I may be inside your jail for now, but I bet I'll be inside your bodies before long. Damn, you did not listen to whatever Morty just said. You were too busy distracted by the way he slowly ran his palms over his thick, veiny, bullish thighs. Shut up, Morty. We're close friends and have supported each other through countless absurd shenanigans. We outnumber you, and besides, you're way too dumb to trick us. Mwahaha! <laughs> oh my camp spooky! He's got a butt window! <laughs> Guess it's time for me to break out the old Morty the Minotaur mind fuck on him. You know, it seems like Joy no. is the alpha in your little group. <laughs> Somewhere between Aravi and Damien. I guess Aravi's the beta, because she's way stronger than Damien. Just one bull's opinion. Hey, watch your hot mouth! How could you say that, Morty? I'm way stronger than Aravi. Ha! No chance in hell, Damien. You're a scrawny demon boy with resistance to fire and no other special moves. I've taken <laughs> shits that are higher tier than you are. <laughs> hey, idiots, calm down. Morty is obviously just trying to pit us against each other and then escape. It happens in literally every movie. C you two, come on. Back off, Joy. And Arava, you can eat my battle asshole. I'll wreck you and your little curse, too. Uh, what the fucking hell? What did I do? I mean, yeah, I'll fight you, but only because I think I smell some beef jerky in your pocket. <sighs> Whatever. I went on the record that I tried. <laughs> Their minds no. are like funny <laughs> and girthy hands. Now for the climax of this encounter. Hey, Joy, let's ditch this <laughs> dumb game. If you get me out of this prison, I'll give you a back rub while you read in perfect silence. Okay, that's kind of silly. Morty's divide and contra strategy is working. Find some way to resist his mind games and restore peace and trust amongst your friends. This game of dodgeball depends on it. When times get tough, you can always bring people back together through an emotional flashback montage. Forget about your differences and focus on the one thing you all have in common. Having a skeleton inside your bodies. <laughs> what? Okay. That's it. Hmm. Is the bottom one smarts? <laughs> I guess. I have no idea. <laughs> like, I've got no fucking clue, dog. Yours have been really weird. They so, all suck, dude. Top, top one could be charm, I guess. Yeah. Your charm's high. 
Eh. I guess we'll try the top one. Charm. These are all both fun. bad. It worked out. It was fun. Huh. A flashback montage is a really good idea. I have a montage spell I've been meaning to try out, actually. Gasp, but no! The power of the <laughs> montage! It's too dangerous! <laughs> Dimitri and I once did a flashback montage. We almost fused together into one mega powerful sex warrior. You just had me a mega powerful. Let's do it, motherfuckers! <laughs> flashback time! You all hold hands and joy cast a spell. You enter the flashback space, whereas the flashback leader, you have total control over the memories you'll watch together. Since you're trying to get your friends to stop fighting, you decide to edit some of your memories to make them a little more flashback appropriate. First, you show your what? friends a warm, happy memory. It's that time Damien helped Joy, un Joy learn Univertica's weakness and defeat the big bad. Huh, I kind of thought that Polly and Boko lied to me and coerced me into helping. But now I remember that I helped Joy because we're great friends. Yeah, man, that was a great season finale. And a great memory of our friendship. And cool Josh had <laughs> <laughs> the cameo of that episode, too. Nice. Next, next you show your friends a memory Wait, of a Robbie. That implies it's not me. Fuck. <laughs> next you show your friends a memory of a Robbie throwing rocks at Damien from a tree. Technically, Robbie was trying to kill him at the time, but you do a little editing. Oh yeah, I remember. I was throwing rocks at Damien as a gesture of my appreciation for our friendship. Hell yeah, so metal, Ravi. I still have the friendship appreciation scars all over my body. <laughs> oh guys, I totally forgot, but it looks like Cool Josh was in this memory too. God, that motherfucker is the coolest. And God, finally, I you show them the memory cool that Josh. started off your whole friendship. What a bastard. The time you all went to the aquarium with Cool Josh on Memorial Day. Ah, uh, the best Memorial Day ever. You guys remember how cool Josh jumped into the shark tank and made friends with all this. the sharks? I hate this. <sighs> yeah, that was, that was the aquarium <laughs> was attacked by giant robots and Poco got into a Gundam suit with cool Josh <laughs> and defeated the robots. That day was fucking legendary because no. it's the day that cool Josh coined his official catchphrase. Nobody better lay a finger on my juicy <laughs> ass. You and your friends laugh and laugh and laugh about your shared memories with Cool Josh. You feel a little bit guilty about editing all the memories using your flashback on evidence, but not guilty enough to stop. You spend all day in the memory spell, reminiscing and bonding together, which earns hey. two charm and one boldness. Noise! So many options. This is already so many options. Uncool Josh, where would you like to go? <laughs> oh, rude. Lake. <laughs> lake it is. Put me in the water. <laughs> Ooh, delightful. You spend the day playing in the lake. Everything is fun until you're mesmerized by a string song. It's the sirens! They try to lure you in with their beautiful chants, but you know better and tell them to a riff off. They kick your ass, but you all definitely had a lot of fun. More specifically, three fun. This is a takeover! Hi. Josh, hi! What are you doing? Not important! It's time to kill Winter! <laughs> oh yeah. I tracked her down. Her name is Bruma, and she lives in Alaska in a palace made of ice and crude oil. Let's go! You hesitate for a moment because Alaska sucks, but Dahlia triggers a travel montage before you can object. <laughs> one plane, one bus, and one tauntaun ride later, you stand before the palace of the Herald of Winter. The portcullis opens with tremendous grating noise. Who dares approach my sanctum? Bellows the Herald, who looks like Elsa from Frozen but wearing a Christmas sweater and poisoned with the words, This is not copyright <laughs> infringement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is I, Dahlia Aquino. Aqu Aquino? I did, sure. I've been saying Aquino because because I have no idea. Aquino, sure, Aquino, and I've come on behalf of the Herald of Sever to melt you into fluid. Ew. Foolish mortar, says Elsa. I mean Bruma. You cannot defeat the mighty winter. It is by far the superior season. What? Impossible. Summer's all the best things: Rivian swimsuits, sweating profusely, the Summer Olympics. Indeed, says Bruma. But winter has bitter cold, not being able to go outside, <laughs> and the Winter Olympics. Curses! She's right! Damn those figure skaters in their sexy ice bikinis. Yes, you cannot stand against me, smiles Bruma. Now run along. I have lunch with Sarah Palin in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Alaska. No, you can't give it's up Alaska. so easily. Surely there must be a way to ruin winter and defeat its herald. Wait, you've got it! Socks! Give her okay. socks! Invite I her all her relatives to a holiday dinner and ambush them, ambush them with politics! Is I, your creativity I, or charm higher? Uh, uh my creativity, creativity is then it's, higher. Then it sucks. Yeah! Then it sucks! Yeah, I was gonna pick sucks! Critical hit. Critical hit! A truly fiendish plan! Here, use my emergency socks! You ask her why she carries around a pair of emergency socks. They're endlessly useful! You can fill them with quarters and use them as blackjack, or turn them into a sock puppet to keep yourself company while stranded on a deserted island. 
And if you ever find yourself without socks to wear, you can use an emergency sock as a ski mask to rob a sock store. <laughs> but of course, the most powerful use of all is to give them as a gift to your enemy, thus totally demoralize them because they expected something better. Quick, put them in an elaborately wrapped gift box and to fix a thoughtful note. That'll show her. You do as instructed and quickly present Bruma with the gift. What's this, she says. A present? For me? Just a moment ago, we were about to fight, but I'm so delighted I've forgotten about all that. Let's see what's inside, shall we? Oh my, it's... Socks? What the hell, you guys? You knew I wanted a bathtub made of crystal! You knew! Oh, I don't even wear socks! I wear leggings! Socks are totally incompatible with my character design! It's not even Christmas and you ruined Christmas! You ruined it so bad there's never going to be Christmas again! I quit! Bruma melts into a very annoyed liquid before your eyes. You've done it! Winter is defeated! <laughs> All the snow in Alaska melts and all the reindeer fucking die. Serves them right. Reindeer suck. Uh, I like how I've defeated both of two both people so far with really stupid options. Yeah. I hope the third one also I get to pick the stupid option. Yeah. Great work, Josh. Maybe it's just a sudden climate change, but I feel I think I feel myself warming up to you. It's definitely the climate change. Alaska is ruined, but you gain two boldness and one creativity, so it all evens out. <laughs> My god, look at my boldness, everybody. Look, look at, at it go. Your smarts. Yeah, I'm real stupid. Josh goes first. Hey. hey, I finally have to go first when it doesn't matter anymore. Nicholas Cage goes last. <laughs> so many options. Where would you like to go, Josh? All right. I really want to just, like, crank my boldness <laughs> yeah. above 19. Yeah. I, like, I want to hit above 20, so I just I kind of want to do it, you know? Yeah, I mean, you'll be at 22 if I do it. Nah, fuck yeah, let's do it. That day you venture into the Oh boy. Everything is going fine and you're reassured on how brave you are. When suddenly a ghost, or is it just someone wearing a blanket with two holes, so hard to tell the difference, appears and whispers in your ear. Remember that one day you will be long gone and no one will remember you. All the struggle you would do to become a better version of yourself, both personally and professionally, will eventually mean nothing. The ghost leaves while you take all that in, gaining three boldness in the process. No, I guess I'm just Nicolas Cage now. Yeah, it changes your name permanently for the rest of this game. Hi, quick question. Does the cows kidnap me if I'm abducting you so you can help me do a thing you already agreed to help with? Never mind, you can answer later. Right now I need to knock you out and drag you to Portland, Oregon. Before you can say I would have come with you willingly, you're woken up by a box <laughs> on your head stuffed in <laughs> stuffed into a side of the suitcase on the PDX baggage carousel. Great, there you are, let's go. It's time to defeat the Herod of Autumn. Their name is Autumn, and they live in a giant <laughs> pumpkin. Dahlia's intelligence turns out to be wrong. The Herald's name is Autumn, all right, but they live in a tasteful craftsman bungalow. They are a giant pumpkin. <laughs> hey, friends, says Autumn, sitting calmly on their porch with a steaming mug of tea. Here to defeat me on behalf of the summer, the Herald of Summer, etc., etc. That's right. Although I have to say I'm a little surprised that Fall is the final boss of this thing. I'm not surprised at your surprise, says Autumn. Chill lo-fi beats seemingly play from nowhere. Every quirky person thinks they're the only one who likes Fall. The thing is, Autumn says as they adjust their their cozy scarf, everybody in the entire world thinks of themselves as quirky. Fall is the most popular season by far, and will be forever. Now, if I have anything to say about it, and I do, what I have to say about it is... No. Doc is cheap, honey, says Autumn. Their voice makes you want to fall into a pile of crisp, colorful leaves. How do you actually plan to defeat me? Well, uh, I'm going to punch you real hard. Mm, no, says Autumn after thinking about it for a, a second. Punching really isn't the vibe right now. What do you mean? Punching is always the vibe. Watch, I'll show you. You're okay. I, I can't do it. The vibes are too chill. It's like trying to punch my way out of a warm quilt. Ah, the vibes. Oh no, with Dahlia's greatest weapon out of commission, how will you ever defeat Autumn? Well, you've got one or two ideas. Sunburns ruins summer, allergies ruins spring, family ruins winter, family drama ruins winter, but fall is ruined by drone attacks. <laughs> Exploit fall's greatest weakness. Offer them pumpkin spice flavored poison. I prefer the top one, but let's see what both It, it is drone because it's boldness. <laughs> yeah. yeah! <laughs> I, I would have actually navigated this right. I picked every right option because nice. it was the stupider option. <laughs> For the first time, Autumn's calm demeanor falters. Drone attacks? Aw, oh, dang, you finally found my only vulnerability. <laughs> it was pretty chill of the self-aware drones to agree to a truce with monster kind at the end of the incredibly sweet monster robot war. I found that roar! 
on both sides, <laughs> just so I could do more fighting. But well, it's a bummer that the truce just forced them to confine all their drone strikes to fall. If it weren't for the constant fear of drone strikes, fall would be the perfect season. Ah, well, so autumn sighs unless their eyes drift up to the horizon. Oh, no. A drone attack? But it's summer! Eh, says Autumn, shrugging. Everything within a 30-mile radius of my design person is considered to be fall for the purposes of the treaty. I live a life of constant peril. I guess I could flee again, change my name to Antonio, and move to Spain, but I really <laughs> like this house. Guess I'll die. Bye, friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you always remember the times we shared together. I will not. Autumn seems about to say something else, but that's then the drones blow up their house in an extremely surgical strike that only obliterates three of the surrounding city blocks. Dahlia protects you with a crushing, muscular embrace. Sploosh. Nice. We did it! The three pretender seasons are defeated. Summer reigns supreme! A children's hospital collapses in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if I'll get a special badge for this. Wow, it feels great to be the hero. Not as great as it feels to get crushed by Dahlia. Plus, you find two charm and one fun in the smoldering wreckage. Boko. It's me. This has been what? excellent. <laughs> okay, what are my stats? Pretty good, mostly. Uh, Creativity is your lowest. Pretty good, eight. but not insane like <laughs> Steven and I have. Creativity, not, please. Not 22. I'm not going to get to a 22, so. <laughs> Look at my boldness, but I'm so <laughs> stupid. That day in Monster Scouts, they teach you how to use the stars and trees bark to find your way when you get lost lost on the internet. As a test, Coach leaves you in the middle of the internet. You easily get lost. Before you know it, you're watching the Spanish synchronized swimming team perform a routine based on Stairway to Heaven. I've been there. Nice. You didn't earn the orientation while in the internet badge, but you definitely gained three creativity from watch watching such a beautiful display of skill. You're living your best camp spooky life when Aravi settles up to you, looking a little more bashful than usual. Oh, oh uh, hey there. Fancy seeing you here at this place where you often hang out. At this time, which I've taken note of. Look, I've enjoyed our adventures as of late, and I wanted to invite you on some sort of normal activity like a shopping trip. But then I reminded her that she doesn't shop. But then I realized I don't shop because I craft my own items. Then that could be a romantic date as well. I mean, a productive time that will set us up to be well equipped for quests. She meant what she said the first time. She definitely doodled a Ravi plus a Boko on her boots of potential marriage plus three. Aw. No! You misread that because you were looking at it upside down because you were being clean like always. Anyway, shut up. Are you in? Hell yeah, you are. Aravi sets up a crafting table and you prepare for some high quality equipment making. All right, so I'll kick us off. I'm going to combine Potion of Silence with Yeti Skin to create a Cape of Cloaking plus two. And then I'll use a broom, a feather, and a ring to craft a flying broomstick. Next, I'll put a car on a car to make a <laughs> You jump in, combining a leather handbag with very loud screaming to provide bagpipes. <laughs> nice. I use pizza plus pineapple to craft oh, controversial food choice. It's perfect, Alice. The two of you have a great time crafting. Occasionally, your hands brush against each other as you reach for materials. Ooh. And is Aravi blushing? You're getting strong vibes that she might be into you, but she may be too sad to say it outright. You should, you should suggest something, crafting something sexy together to help get your flirt on. Personal lubricant on battle axe to craft sexy Ooh. battle axe. Horse legs on a horse torso to craft a romantic horse ride. Mm, oh, I don't like that one charm. Much. Top one's charm, right? Feels like it. Maybe. Yeah, go. Or bottom one, may maybe. Bottom one may be arm. The top one may be boldness because it's a fucking axe. Mm hmm. So, yeah, the bottom let's one, go feel with bottom the one bottom. feels like charm, though. Okay, let's go for the bottom. Yeah. Don't beef it. Yeah. Nice. I'm Good totally job. staring, aren't I? Oh shit, a notification. Uh, Coffin Jockey VA is now following. Thank you, Coffin Jockey. And also get yeah. back to oh, your wow. own stream, you fucking poser. You try to craft a romantic <laughs> horse on, but you fail. Yeah, they probably wrapped up. We've been here a long time. You keep trying, and you it's keep failing. Two. Wait, hang on. I think you're crafting it wrong. The torso goes on top of the legs. <laughs> the legs. Not legs on top of the torso. You're mortified by your faux pas de cheval, and you realize you know very little about horse anatomy, but Aravi <laughs> seems charmed. Here, let's learn how to properly craft a horse together. Hex, pass me my sewing kit. The one with the skull and knives that say hardcore item crafty, or the ones with the hearts and the flowers that says secret crochet hobby? 
first <laughs> one hex. Aravi threads the needle and holds her hand, guiding it as you sew the horse parts together. It's intricate, romantic, and full of horse blood and guts, just like how you like it. Wow, great work. It's beautiful. I feel like we should just keep the party going, right? There's still some orc heads in the crochet bag. Not sure why. Perfect. You are throwing that around. Hell yeah, you are. You sew the two orc heads onto the torse. Then you add a fancy bouquet of orchids, the face of a grumpy cat, a powerful crossbow, and relics of a haunted sunken ship. It's a masterpiece. Now to add a potion of revive and bring our beautiful child to life. Uh-oh. Hmm. hmm. Doesn't seem to be working. I had to give up on a good quest, but... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop right there. Look at this abomination. Granting it any sort of life would clearly be a curse to this poor maligned beast. You're right. I guess I wasn't thinking about the ethical ramifications. What? No, I'm just saying life would curse it, and curses are kind of my deal, so I bet I could bring it to life. <laughs> Takes almost no effort for Hex to potato the, the horse orchidos ship cat. Glorious, hideous life. You and Aravi hop on. Enjoy the sights and sounds of a romantic ride, as well as the joys of spitting in the face of God. You gave to me once once. Nicholas does, Cage. Yeah. Oh, boy. Where did... Hey, where you going, Nick? Just because I feel like smarts, like it's, I feel like smarts maybe is a stat, even if I do, if I don't yeah, get I mean, the death ending. So you might I mean, as well. You get, you get to go up to twelve. So yeah, that'll probably be. Pff, I forgot how this looks. That day, while you're hiking through the woods, an angry gnome steps into your path. Halt, giant beast! He cries. If it is passage you seek, you must first answer my riddles three. Riddle number one: How is a raven like a writing a desk? Raven like a writing desk. Mm, that's a tough call, but you give your answer. You punt the gnome into the sky and continue your merry way. <laughs> no. Apparently that was no, the correct response because no one else tries reference. to fuck with Come you. Back. You gain three smarts. What's the answer? I don't remember. No. Is it something just random? Because it's Alice yes. in Probably. Hang on one second. I'll Google it. You're going to die in less than 48 hours, but honestly, this has been the best week of your entire life, and it's all thanks to Milo. They've been spending every moment with you, planning your big party and helping you celebrate all the best parts of being alive. Currently, the I can't two of you are admiring some die. blooming pink cherry blossom trees together. In a private garden, of course. No peasants around to obstruct your view. Aren't the blossoms gorgeous, Nicholas Cage? Technically, cherished cherry blossoms are supposed to bloom in the spring, not the summer. But I called in a few favors with nature so you could see them now. Be downright tragedy if you die before searing these flowers, after all. Milo sighs happily and leans on your shoulder. They whip out their phone and start texting. You realize that this is one of your favorite parts of life. Quiet, comfortable silence while someone you adore is texting right beside you. You enjoy the moment. Okay, uh, oh, the answer to the riddle is, uh, because neither is ever approached without cause. Oh, okay. Yep. That sucks. Oh, look, Nicolas Cage. The carrier for the party just confirmed they can make the Amu spoosh look like tiny versions of your face. Thank God. My, my, I can't believe that party is tomorrow. Life flies by so quickly. By the way, have you started contemplating your big party toast? It'll be the total climax of the evening, and really the encapsulation of what made your life worth living. No pressure, though. Why don't you read me what you have so far, dear? I'll be sure I'll, I'm sure I'll be thoroughly impressed with your profundity. Okay, it's time to impress the fuck out of Milo with your big party speech. You've been working on it, so this should be pretty easy. You'll just have to make up two poetic metaphors and one mind-blowing closing line. Here goes. Oh, no! Oh, no! No. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh oh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Good luck. Good evening, cherished friends and family. Today I die, but don't fret. It's okay for death. Today, death is just another thing that happens. The end of a beautiful song, a five-letter word, my favorite ice cream flavor. Uh, the end of a beautiful song, because my creativity is real high. I don't fucking know. As I, Nicolas Cage, face my rapidly <laughs> approaching doom, I now realize that life has been like... A jazz solo, where improvisation meets beauty. As a prettily, I want to tell you about the thing I think everyone should do at least once before leaving this room. We should all... Steal the Declaration of Independence. <laughs> Face Steal off. Steal the deck. I don't have enough room for Declaration of Independence. Just put... We should all just face off. Face off. <laughs> we should all face just slash off. Face it, you're right. Face sorry. slash face off. off. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, yes. Your words ring so true, so wise. I've brought death to so many people, and I couldn't put it together myself. Death truly is the end of a beautiful song. When you think of it like that, my job as a Grim Reaper applies a whole new layer of meaning, doesn't it? And life, life, such poetry, Nicholas Cage. You make life and death make so much sense. 
Of course, if life is clearly a jazz solo where improvisation meets beauty, it can only end with the end of the beautiful song. Oh, hey, you did it. Those two things are such a perfect complement for each other. Such an obvious balance. Ah, uh, when you put it like that, you make me fall in love with life all over again. Nicholas Cage, I didn't know you had such poetry in your heart. Thank you for sharing it with me. Finding the poetry in life may sound cheesy, but it is so necessary. Sadly, there are so many people spending their days complaining and focusing on what makes them hurt. So much frustration, anger, and sadness. It's true that life can be hard, but it's not a good or a bad thing. It's a complicated entanglement of many things that spin and spin until it stops spinning when you less expect it. Will you welcome death as the final chapter to the, all, all the delicious things in your life savored? Will you ask yourself why you never got the chance to face off as you realize that all of it could be and wasn't? <laughs> then, then there's other people, the ones that, as you say, see life as a jazz solo where improvisation meets beauty. It is so sweet to watch them die. Their soul truly sings Nicolas Cage as they found the little miracles hidden in the day by day. <laughs> As they remember all the kisses, all the dances, all the laughter, oh my God, every celebration where everything, where they ended up embracing the sun as it arrives, surrounded by loved ones, so embriated of life. I don't even fucking know what that word is. They look so at peace, Neat. and as they take my hand, they tell me about all those beautiful memories. Milo takes her hand. How can you not love life when, in between all the pain, it has the potential to harbor all that raw, aggressive beauty? Isn't everything weird and wonderful? If only we had met before. If you had had more time, we could face off together. Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine. I want to take your face. Oh. No, oh. I choose to focus on what's good. I am happy that we met now, Nicholas Cage, and that I got to know you this well before you go. Come. Milo pulls you into a vibrant, passionate dance. Tomorrow will be a sad day, but also a wonderful day. Let's dance to life and to all that makes this wild ride something so memorable. And to you, to you and me, let's dance forever till the world ends. Dance with me. They look at you so intensely. It's like they pierce the very core of yourself. Ah, so close to the end, yet feeling like life is just blossoming into such a feast of emotions. But who cares? Today you dance. Today you dance forever. Cool, I didn't have to do anything. Hell yeah. <laughs> Last day of summer is here, Josh. Who will be your summer Whoa. love? Dahlia, I assume. Mm. Yep. Uh, yep. Boko, who will be your summer Ooh. love? Aravi, I assume. Yes. Today we learn if our stats are high enough. Let's go. Yes. Nicholas Cage, who will be your summer love? <laughs> Joy. Milo. Or yourself. Let's do this. Boko. Oh, no. That means Time to gather the courage to ask your beloved to watch the meteor shower with you. Wait, do you want to be my summer fling? Whoa! Like, dating? Uh, okay. I mean, we could totally get into competitive dating. Yeah, you versus me! <laughs> get ready for intense sessions of dating. I gotta totally kick your ass. You hope so. The last day of camp was hey. amazing. Oh, that's really cute. It is. Before the meteor shower, you and Aravi spent the whole day exploring nearby caves searching for gold and treasure. You fought lots of super dangerous creatures, and in a dramatic moment when a killer mind flayer had you in its clutches, Arabi swooped in to save you. Hex filmed the whole thing and put it on TikTok. Now the whole world knows you as Arabi's damsel in distress, and you're okay with that. Nicholas Aww. Cage, today is the day. Today you die. <laughs> you're gonna die. Hey, Nicholas Cage, we both know what happens now. Are you ready? Oh, he's ready? in reaper mode. Yeah, as ready up. as you'll ever be. Your big party goes off without a hitch. It's a true celebration of life. Your life. After several hours of dancing and fun, everyone has gone to watch the meteor shower or elsewhere. It has been beautiful, hasn't it? I've loved doing this with you. I didn't know you that well before, but now that I've helped arrange a celebration in your life, I think I know you much better. And I must admit, I like what I see. Okay, should happen at any moment now. I'll get a ping on my phone for the gig. I asked to take any gig nearby tonight, so I should be the one bringing you to the other side. You two hold hands and wait. And wait. Weird. Let me check something. Hmm. Uh-oh. Oh. Oh. Okay, so funny story. <laughs> I think I misread the gig. It wasn't you who's dying tonight, but another- Oh, Nicholas no! Cage. <laughs> it's a pretty common name, you know. Oh, no! Oh, no! <laughs> Nicholas Cage! You bastard! You've killed Nicholas Cage! <laughs> uh, if only I paid a bit more attention to my gigs. My bad. So, you're not going to die? I mean, you will someday, but not tonight. Still, we could keep on celebrating life, if you know what I mean. 
Milo starts undressing while entering the lake. They throw you a short, suggestive glance. Your heart stops for a second, but like, in a good nice. way. You join Milo in the lake. They're so free, so in love with life, it's inspiring. You can learn a lot from them, like how meaningless it is to worry about death when you can spend every minute basking in the earthly wonders of being alive. And that night, you celebrate life in a feast of flesh and desire. All right. After your seasonal adventure together, you want to ask Dahlia to be your summer fling. She's quite easy to find, is she radiating a potent summer light? Hey, Josh! We did it! We defeated the other seasons! Since then, I've started to glow weirdly. I think it's obviously because I'm the best harbinger of summer that's ever existed. What, you want me to be your summer fling? Ah, of course. If I really want to achieve the best summer ever, it's clear I need a summer fling. I'm Dahlia Queen... A Akino. Queen of summer, conqueror of the seasons. Bow to me, Josh. <laughs> Henceforth, you should be known as my summer fling. May you bask in my beauty and feast on my estival flesh? Estival? Dahlia Holy accepts fuck. you in a warm buff embrace. She's full of radiance and beauty. It blinds you powerfully. You become her summer fling. The good news is that by defeating the other seasons, this summer lasts a whole year while new seasonal harbingers appear. Best summer ever. We all win. Everyone won. Hey. We got two thousand... secret endings. 1,130 yes. total outcomes. Jesus Holy Christ. Fuck. I think it, it, technically every event has like two success states two. and yeah. two fail states. So yeah, that's crazy. Yep. Oh, we all win. Hey. Milo read the game before everyone started hey. calling you Nicolas Cage. That's a good point. I got to kill all the other seasons. <laughs> and you got to see her boobs. Yeah, I know. I was I wasn't gonna bring that up, but I was. Before we knew it, those weeks from were Twitch. gone. It felt like a hot minute, and then felt like an entire lifetime. That night, as we saw summer coming to an end, we all wondered what would come for us next. It felt like the end of something big. Little did we know, life still had many wonders and misadventures in store for us. Now I'm older, and I can see it. How those years became the foundation of the mythology of our lives. Broken hearts turned tragedies sung for centuries. Wild nights became epics treasured forever. Every kiss and every laugh is now a constellation we'll always find while gazing into the starry night, no matter how many years go by. Even today, I can still close my eyes and I'm there. On that last summer night. Feeling like I was just starting to live life. Oh, this is cool. With all my friends around that campfire. So young and unafraid. But we're ready so to start. Ready to start. Nope. Oh. Ah. oh. This is ah. cool. It me. Oh, oh. <laughs> the shoulder one is playing the guitar. Oh, Kalkos is text. doing Sudoku okay, on nice his Dimitri. face. And also Scott and Polly are in the lake. Yeah, eating oh, yeah. hot dogs. Me though. Which? Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh oh. Pizza guy. Ah, Dolly. Yes. Excellent content. <laughs> oh. Mr. Completionist Macaroni is in this art. game, apparently. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Also longer than I would have assumed. Monster Prime TV show win. 
pit. Uh oh. A good review means a lot to us. Best fandom ever. Oh my god. Oh. The bees! Bees! <laughs> the bees! Not the bees! <laughs> Build your uh, goal. This credit sequence is much longer than the first one. And also much more yeah. involved. I do like it a lot. Again, I love that Polly Aww. and Scott are just kind of here. <laughs> yep, for no real reason. <laughs> they just are. Thanks for playing. You're welcome. That was hey. delightful. Yay. Thank God. What sort of unlocks do we get, though? Oh, nothing. Oh, well. <laughs> cool. Uh, All right, well. Uh, you don't even get the gallery yet? No. Gallery is not in the game yet. Uh. They're, wor they're working on it. All right, well, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. It's super late. Uh, have a good night. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed for... the three hour stream. Yeah, we'll Bye. see you tomorrow for Final Fantasy. I, I need to go to bed. It only would have been two and a half, but you motherfuckers made me start over. <laughs> and, yeah, but... and we got, I got to kill spring, <laughs> winter, and fall. Fair enough. Yeah, we all won. I'm not upset about it. All right, have a good night. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>